Welcome to the June 3rd Town of Hampton Selectman's Meeting, 100 Winning Kind of Road, Hampton, New Hampshire. First on the agenda tonight, Roman numeral one is recognition of service with the former chair. Please come forward. Former Chairman Griffin. We miss you. Town of Hampton. Resolution and recognition of service. Whereas Richard P. Griffin has served the people of the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as a member of the Board of Selectmen for the past nine years and as a member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment for three years. Whereas he has served with distinction providing guidance and leadership during his tenure as Chairman of the Board of Selectmen and as Clerk of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Whereas he has served the town of Hampton above and beyond the call of duty on many occasions, often a personal sacrifice. And be it resolved that the selectmen and citizens of the town of Hampton make known their appreciation of the services <coughs> Richard P. Griffin has rendered to the town of Hampton. Whereunto we have set our hands and sealed this 20th day of May in the year of our Lord 2013 <coughs> of the 375th year of incorporation of the town of Hampton in the 333rd year of the founding of New Hampshire and the 236th year of independence of the United States of America. The Hampton Board of Selectmen, congratulations. Thank you. I'd like to uh, thank everybody for the opportunity to serve the town of Hampton. I really enjoyed it and uh, continue to enjoy it. And I, I'd like to say that it can be um, very challenging, but a very rewarding opportunity. And I wish that there were more people out there that would put their name out so that they could have the same opportunity. And I'd like to especially thank um, Michael Pierce for keeping my seat warm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, former Chairman Griffin. Uh, Roman number, number two, public comment period. Any public comment? Yes, Mr. Moody, please. Art Moody, <coughs> Three Thompson Road. <coughs> Excuse me. That was a moment in silence for our recently departed courthouse school district building. I'd like to have a sort of a little requiem for the uh, old schoolhouse, <coughs> detailing some of the, the things that happened there. Uh, Nick Reed had a nice article in Friday's Hampton Union about some of the uses. Built in 1873, 1873, it was 140 years old until that uh, Pelham company knocked it down last Tuesday the 28th and send the, sent the rubble out of town to a private landfill. Uh, and <coughs> it was near the center school until that was built in 1922 and then it was moved to Academy Avenue and the Beach Road, Winnicomet <coughs> Road as it was also known as, now Winnicomet outfitted as a fire station for two men to live there during their work week. Two, two, two apparatus bays, one of which was a tank, a truck of water for a long time before they gave that truck to DPW. The, before that, <coughs> the previous years, it was the hall, the second floor was used for a basketball court with a wood stove at one end, one end of the court, which had to be avoided, of course, at all course. But in 32, it came to life as both a uh, as a uh, fire station, and in 33, the Legion got town meeting approval to use it as the hall as their post headquarters for three towns, Legion Post 35 and their auxiliary. They got the town to put a toilet upstairs, put in radiators, 
allow them to put a flagpole on the lawn and a field piece, which was the big gun. It was probably the only time field piece appeared in any of our warrants. And uh, Cub Scouts and Boy, Co Boy Scout troops usually had group pictures near that gun. Uh, they subsequently allowed the uh, Legion to uh, do other things. They put on a porch, front porch, and we have the famous pictures of 1942 of our auxiliary police department. Twelve women and 14 citizens that were men with their bell billy clubs take posing for a picture on that porch. And uh, you can see that on the TV. The uh, about 11 of those 24, 26 people, uh, their families have street names for them in town. Three of those people in the uh, town cl uh, tax collector, a town clerk, and a selectman had streets named for them specifically. Uh, <coughs> the uh, court went in there in 1949, the municipal traffic court from the old town office that burned, the old town hall, former church, burned in 1949 and the court kicked the legion out and we set up a court there, part-time court. However, when the nucleus station and plant in Seabrook was being built, it became necessary for the state to make it a full-time court because of all the protesting activity and arrests. For instance, the 1977 arrests of 1,414, and I'm not sure if that clerk of court just made that number up to make it easy to remember, but they mentioned they, they had to use the army armory in Portsmouth to house all those people because they refused bail. They refused to, to even give their names or they had, did not have permanent addresses. They're from out of state. We have a state rep here tonight who was one of them uh, before he was a state rep in Seabrook or Hampton. And uh, they clogged it. It was two years later before the first appeals of the district court went to Superior Court. And then in July of 79, county attorney in the court in Brentwood threw out all the cases, 838 dismissed because it was uh, being built so they weren't going to stop it. And subsequently there were a lot of protests even in that year of 79 when the parts of the nuclear plant came into Seabrook Harbor and the phalanx of police marched it up to Route 1 in Seabrook. And, uh, the main thing that made it into a full-time court was the October 6, 1979 protest where 10,000 people were predicted to come to protest because Three, three Mile Island had just occurred uh, in Pennsylvania. And the selectmen of Hampton requested Governor Hugh Galen to send in the National Guard because we were being invaded and uh, selectman Mary Louise Woolsey insisted that any Hampton cop sent to Seabrook for that protest had battle gear, riot squad gear, and uh, 450 co state police and, and National Guardsmen protected the perimeter. Over 2,000 showed up in Seabrook and camped in the woods. And over three days of water cannons, tear gas, 400 were left and they dissipated vowing to come back and only 21 arrests because they didn't want to clog up the court system again. The uh, town ran the court until 1980. The judge, uh, Al Kazazer, did, did not want to give up his law practice and become a full-time judge. And so uh, an out-of-town judge was appointed for the uh, duration to 2005 when they broke a town lease and moved to Seabrook. And uh, we should probably put a plaque at that site of some sort. 
When the grass grows, it'll look like a veterans memorial park with the two monuments to three war veterans. And uh, I think that that uh, so much went on in that building, kindergartens, first kindergarten, public, early 50s, which my private kindergarten teacher, who whose business went out when they voted to have a public, she was a teacher there, and her husband was a fireman downstairs. And uh, so much happened in that building. And I, as a bail commissioner in the 1980s, I operated out of that court uh, at least once a week with the bail report. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Other public comment, please. Norm Silberdick, 70 Tide Mill Road. Uh, there, the latest controversy between the ZBA and the Board of Selectmen uh, that could possibly lead to litigation among two groups within a town. Uh, as a uh, spokesman for the rational taxpayers of Hampton, I find this totally objectionable that the town's money would be used to settle a squabble between two groups that can re of reasonable men and women that should be able to sit down and iron out their differences because ultimately the town of Hampton benefits by continued development on the beach and that adds to the further desirability of other developers to come in the community. There are understandable limits to what one can do, but I think that the parties involved should make the effort to try and resolve their differences without having it to resort to any form of litigation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Further public comment, please. Mr. Nyan, this, this issue uh, tonight, there's, there's room for public comment, but it is not on the agenda, so I don't, uh, now is the time to speak. There's a five minute limit per person. And it, it is open mic. This is an issue that has uh, uh, generated a lot of enthusiasm for, for both sides of this issue. It has been widely reported uh, with elected officials comment in the paper, and this is a, a public forum where people that do not speak to the press and don't have that opportunity that are interested in it can come forth and speak their five minutes during public comment. Going further, it was requested by me to the town manager to place this on the agenda. When we met Thursday, it was not on the agenda and didn't come out when the agenda was published. So I accept responsibility for not drilling down on that. However, I did communicate that. Mr. Nyan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, Board of Selectmen. First of all, I want to give uh, thanks to all of you for the opportunity to speak on this uh, very important issue this evening. And I would like to take my, uh, try my five minutes uh, to discuss briefly a, a couple of subjects. The first is, as you know, the Hampton Beach Area Commission has supported the Green Project uh, at the Zoning Board of Appeals, and we remain in support of this project. The Hampton Beach Master Plan that was established to set long and short-term strategies has a number of areas that the Commission has evaluated prior to the approval and support of this project. We also have a committee within the Beach Commission that meets with respective developers and discusses with that developer on their plans uh, around the architect, the design of the facilities, the intent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we did that with the Green Project. Some of the things that, um, in in looking at the master plan, um, it is a very thick document, has a lot of facts, <coughs> has an awful lot of recommendations, and it has an awful lot of vagueness in its words. But some of the things that I think is important to point out tonight is in certain areas within the master plan. For example, under key recommendations of the Hampton Beach Master Plan, Section 1D, it talks about the expansion of higher value year-round residence in appropriate locations. In Section 2, page 5, 
Hampton Beach should be a pleasant year-round neighborhood for its year-round residents. Section 2, page 6. As a major source of tax revenue to the town, the town should support public and private reinvestment that improves Hampton Beach as both a seasonal and year-round business location. And throughout the entire master plan, there's a number of references that talks about mixed use of land, especially connecting retail with residential. We feel that the proposed plan that was submitted to the zoning board met those issues. Now, to be fully transparent on the entire master plan, and credit to Selectman Nichols, which he and I have shared the interest of reading the entire plan. There are places in this plan that talks about height, but it's very vague. There is nowhere in the plan that it specifically talks about height restrictions. It talks about the word moderate. <coughs> it talks about that the height restrictions should be considered by the town planning and town zoning. It references it directly in the master plan. Specifically, acceptable building heights comments are found throughout the plan. And with respect to the heights, but in no place, as I said, in the plan itself does it talk about specific height requirements. It indicates that the town, through its planning and zoning board, needs to determine the permitting and variance request in this area. Now let me address the 2009 vote regarding the height restrictions. We all should agree that the landscaping of Hampton Beach has changed dramatically since 2009. A lot of public and private funds have now been invested. Things are changing down in Hampton Beach. <coughs> Both state and local private sectors have been investing very heavily in Hampton Beach. And I truly believe, and I speak as a resident, not as a chairman of the Beach Commission, but I truly believe as a resident that if people voted on that warrant article today, and had a better and clearer understanding of that warrant article, that that warrant article would have passed. That is just my opinion. Because of this, Hampton Beach Area Commission's potential, we're, we're considering a potential warrant article to present to the town next March to look at the height. And what we're going to be doing is be we want to talk to the business owners at the beach to really get a good understanding of what their thoughts are on this before we go forward. And then finally, in closing, I know that a number of you, if not all of you, have talked over the last couple of months very seriously about the revenue situation we have here in the town of Hampton. We all know that the state and the federal government has its issues with funding. We all know that we have differences of opinion between federal, state, and local. And I know that you all, as selectmen, really want to spend some time in looking at new ways of generating revenue into this town. I can't think of a better way to create that revenue stream than to approve certain projects, such as the green projects, that will add a tremendous amount of revenue to the tax base here in Hampton. Thank you very much, and I'll be open to answer any questions if you have them. Thank you, sir. Further public comment? Please, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'll try to be very brief and uh, get done in my allotted time. Uh, you know, I, I look at this as uh, not so much as my opinion. I, I look at this as the the, you know the spirit, the spirit of the law. I'd like to do a little bit of a timeline. First, we got a master plan. Then there was recommended. The, the recommendation was moderate heights. Before the ink was dry on that plan, 
A developer came forward with a 108 foot building proposal. This set off a debate in town. Mr. Tom Gillett called for a meeting with Steve Cecil of the Cecil Group, who wrote the master plan, to come and explain what he meant by moderate. This was a public meeting in his very room. And my recollection was Mr. Cecil said he meant to keep the heights at 50 feet. So nine years ago, I wrote a Warren article, number 30, for the March 9, 2004 town meeting, to try to get the opinion of voters. It read in asking the town of Hampton to maintain and enforce all current maximum building heights in each and every zone in Hampton until all residents of Hampton have municipal sewer service. The yeas were 3,145. The nays were 1,243. By the way, I count, that's 1,900 votes different. That's just a little over two and a half to one. Since that time, other attempts have been made and failed at changing building heights in different parts of the Hampton Beach commercial zone. Let's fast forward today, and I, and I say this is my opinion. There is no way four members of the Zoning Board of Adjustment should be able to usurp the intent or the actions of the Hampton electorate. The only fair way to settle this is for it to be put forward to the voters. The HBAC's mission statement is to implement the town's master plan, if I'm to understand their mission sta statement correctly. On one hand, people look at the master plan and consider it the Bible. On the other hand, it's simply a guide. We can't all cherry pick our personal preferences in the master plan. In its recommendations, I think it says here number four, it states that the town needs to ensure that zoning ordinance standards are upheld. Establish a clear set of written policies regarding variances and other exceptions to the ordinance that ensure state codes are followed. The intent is to discourage the incremental problems with granted changes and to improve zoning and to adhere to it. The Hampton Beach Master Plan overall vision section further states that building heights and densities should remain moderate and consistent with the image of a clustered coastal village. Maybe the HBAC needs to write a Warren article and let the voters decide. You know, I heard John just mention, you know, ways to, you know, create some funding there, but maybe air rights, you know, in the, could be addressed in the Warren article with the town on living space over 50 feet. Maybe emergency fire and rescue equipment and training could factor into living spaces over 50 feet. The possibilities are endless, but all decisions should be made by the Hampton voters. My opinion is not the issue. The ordinances are the issue. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Chair. For public comment, please. Hi. Thanks for having us. I'm Bob Preston. I live at 35 Campton Street in uh, Hampton, just, little, just over the bridge. And I have a family business at the beach. Where I work with my brother, and as many of you know, my little brother and I don't always agree. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of those times. I was on the master plan committee um, way back and we sat through hours and hours of, of what would be best for the future of the beach and we keep using the word moderate. Mm -hmm. Well I think moderate also means reasonable and if you look at these little lots that we have there's no economic sense that we can have if we hold living units to under 50 feet. I think going up another floor is reasonable and it does make sense. Now. I'm also on the Hampton Beach Area Commission, and we talk about all these things all the time. We've all worked together, many of the people in this room, collectively to make the beach where it is today. Now, I can tell you as a real estate broker, you know, having rented so far this year 1,800 reservations, the people that are coming up to Hampton have amazing things to say about what's happening. You know, the, there are a lot of people that just that are just now seeing what's happening at the seashell. And this summer, they're going to come up and see all those people enjoying the sea spray and, and Tommy McGurk's place and, and, and the other improvements that, that we have. So I think that that's the way that we should continue. And, and if we can approve this plan, then next year we'll have that much more enthusiasm for the beach. And I think that will encourage other people to want to come and do the same. 
So I hope that uh, we can all agree to, to figure something out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Rick Griffin, Ocean Boulevard, uh, along about a quarter of a mile down the street as a butter from this project, maybe a half mile. Um, I think that m many people are really disturbed about uh, the events that have taken place here. I think it's very disturbing that the Board of Selectmen uh, would go and take into consideration of hiring other lawyers when we already have two lawyers. We all know that w even when I was on the zoning board nine years ago when p projects bigger than this were uh, passed <coughs> and given the go-ahead um, that the town then hired, you know, had to hire lawyers uh, where the zoning board hired their own lawyer, the town hired their own lawyer. We already had lawyers working for the town. It's very disturbing that <coughs> the taxpayers would be expected to uh, pay for both sides of this argument. Um, I think that uh, as far as you know, in many ways, this fits into the master plan because it is taking uh, a couple of uh, some pieces of property that really there is no other answer for, um, and something positive happens. The fact that this extends the um, business district somewhat down um, Ocean Boulevard further towards Church Street is a big benefit also. Uh, there was more business there years ago than there is today, and there needs to be more business there in the future. I've been in business for 40 years in Hampton Beach, and I know on Ocean Boulevard, and I know how positive the results can be. Um, I'd also like to say that a few weeks ago, I think maybe four weeks ago, uh, the concerned taxpayers of Hampton came up and, uh, test and uh, made public comment about, uh, and they ripped apart some of the town employees. I personally think that is disgraceful, um, especially where there are members of the board here that are members of the taxpayers of Hampton. They've already had their opportunity to deal with the employees. They really shouldn't be having uh, a group that they belong to coming up and ripping the employees apart. I myself realize how uh, <coughs> little credibility the taxpayers of Ham the rational taxpayers of Hampton, I guess they had to change their name. They used to be called, uh, I don't even remember their name, but it's been a group that's been around for a long time and they have very little credibility. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Richard Green. I'm with the Green and Company. I just want to speak briefly about this whole height issue. The actual height of this building is 56 feet. What the elevator shaft and some architectural details are what is pushing this to 70 feet, and particularly the elevator shaft. In many towns, the elevator shaft is not even counted in the height. So what you really have, if we wanted to strip all that off, is a building that's 56 feet high. It's only six feet above, what, you know, what, what the uh, uh, height restriction is. <coughs> so I, d I really don't feel that, uh, you know, you should take it, you know, the, the elevator shaft, which is nothing more than a big chimney in back of the building and, and a little architectural detail on the forward part of the building should be what drives this. The true height of the r roof is 56 feet. Uh, good, <coughs> good evening. My name is Norm Bollier. Uh, I used to be a regular here 15 or 20 years ago, right? <laughs> and uh, I haven't come out very often since then. I've been on the beach 38 years. And we have t uh, my family's done over about <coughs> many, many projects. And we have done very well at Hampton Beach. And Hampton Beach has been good for us, and I love Hampton Beach. Now, right now, we've re I think this is a really important time in Hampton Beach. I ha have not seen as much enthusiasm as there is in Hampton Beach now. Uh, f fiscally, it's beautiful. The interest rates are up, the, uh, are down. I mean, the uh, number of sales are up, and things are going well. This is a very important time for, for this mm -hmm. beach. 
I think about it many times. I said, uh, what, what has happened before? I, w I was thinking this morning about the fire at J and K Street. Just think about that. Now, I, I can always I can like to talk about that because uh, even though it was the uh, old salt fire, quote unquote, there were two other buildings taken down, and one was the Springfield Motor Lodge that I owned at the time. And we attempted to rebuild a hotel and the Higgins family, a restaurant that would have made a nice addition there. It couldn't be done fiscally. The, there is no way to build a ho hotel on Hampton Beach fiscally. You cannot make the cash flow work as an individual. And we, we've seen it many, many times. It's been 28 years since a new hotel has been built on Hampton Beach, period. And I'm talking about not a condo. There's been a couple of condos. Dick Roy has done one uh, lately, but it's a condo. And it can't be done physically. Now, what else are we going to do? I want. I like to see development down there. We knew we need the retail. I walk the beach about every day, yeah. and I see what the people are thinking. We needed something done down there. This is the time to do it. Please let this project go through. Further public comment. Thank you. Nancy Stiles, One Haven Circle. I'd like to follow up on Norm's comments. The Zoning Board is a duly elected board whose authority is to grant variances to our ordinances. So before this board moves forward, I would ask that you look at their report, why they granted the variances. That's their, that's their job to do. And were there people, were there um, abutters there that were in opposition to it? Uh, so if you would look at that report in thorough before you move forward with anything of spending more taxpayer dollars. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Kathy Rush, and I've been in real estate for a few years in the Seacoast area. I started at 12, but oh, that's a joke. Anyways, I've moved to New Hampshire, and I moved to Hampton in 1967. And I know Rick Green very well and Michael Green very well. I apologize for my laryngitis. But they made us work very hard yesterday. We had over 200 people, 200 people that came in to see Spray yesterday. So excited about the project that they had developed here. And enthusiastic about us going forward with maybe another project <coughs> if you would deem that possible for us. So I just want to say to you, I think it's been a compliment to Hampton Beach. I enjoy working with Kara Shockey, whose family has been very involved with the beach, and Todd Lasso. And I would recommend and encourage you all to look very positively on this project that has been embraced by many people that we had there yesterday, over 200. Thank you. My name is Robert Ledger. I live at 347 Ocean Boulevard, probably the only abutter and direct abutter in the room right now. Um, we followed, obviously, with great interest, the zoning board actions on this uh, project, and I, for one, was very happy and very satisfied with the adjustments that were made because when I look out my window, I'm going to be looking at, you know, my view will be better than it would have been had they not made these adjustments. Um, I obviously can't speak for the other owners of Rocky Well, but for myself, again, I'm the only person in this room who is really going to be directly affected. I am s extremely in favor of this project, and I think it's I think it's good for the beach, and I think it should go forward. And I compliment the zoning board on what they did because had they not made the adjustments, it would have been a much different, uh, you know, outcome. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can you ask him to repeat his name? Pardon me? Can you ask Robert him? Ledger. Robert Ledger. Thank you. Butcher. Thank you. Yes, sir. Further comment, please? Mm -hmm. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Ray Blondo, and I, I'm the one that had the big fire on Ocean Boulevard and I was I'm one that would really love to build a new arcade but the economics doesn't allow it 
it's too expensive. I'd have to go up, way up, if I wanted to, to pay for just the first and second and third floor that I had. My apartment burnt, everything burnt. I, you used to be able to buy a loaf of bread and feed a family for 25 cents when I was a kid. What do you pay for a loaf of bread now? From two to four dollars. And here we are in Hampton Beach, as beautiful as you guys allowed it to become in the state, spent a lot of money. Why don't they keep going the way they're going? Because it's the best it's ever been. It's quieter. After this week, when the school lets out, you're going to have a lot of families. I think it's very important. I think the little houses are important, but the development for economic, for the town, for the taxes, they got to allow developers to be able to afford to build these things. Because they're not buying a piece of land for the same price I paid for it. If you all remember in the 80s, they were auctioning off property you could buy for a dime on a dollar. Can't do that no more. It's not allowed because it's too expensive. So I feel, and my wife is on a <coughs> zoning board in Goffstown, and the zoning board is elected. They should have a little elbow room to do it. And I'll say, you know, years ago, and I'm talking years ago when I first started here, I was on 19 Atlantic Ave. I had three condos there. Got to a point where I w when I went into the arcade, I got rid of the condos because it's expensive. Now, if you take and allow, uh, you'll never get, I used to dream, oh, a hotel, a hotel. Ashworth was supposed to go to Marriott, am I correct? It never went to Marriott because it won't meet the criteria. There's not enough room for Marriott to even put their name on the building. It's just not big enough. So what are we doing? We should allow them to build and make it look good. Now that sea breeze is going to be one heck of a building. And originally it was allowed to go 81 feet. And because of people going around with a uh, sign a petition, they put a stop to it and the, the man went out. He, he ran out of money. So let's not chase developers away because when is the next developer going to come in? When it's too late, probably. So I wish that you gentlemen would seriously, seriously think about what's going on here. And don't allow the the time to go by. Look how long it went with the old salt. Fifteen years? Ten years? No. Fourteen. <coughs> Fourteen years. That's the way it's going to be if, if things keep going the way it is. I don't think we should, we should have boards fighting amongst one another whether it's okay or not. Let, let the board do their work and let the building inspector make sure they build a good building. That's all. And they do look good. I thank you for your time. Further public comment this evening. Representative Rice, please. Thank you. Uh, Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. I'd like to put some of the comments that have been made in a little bit of context. Uh, about 10 years or so ago, the town hired Faye Spofford and Thorndike to do a very complete study of Hampton Beach. And it was called the Visioning Statement. It was, a, it was a very comprehensive study of the entire beach area and what its future should be. And many of the elements in that study have been implemented the rebuilding of Ashworth Avenue and the lettered streets, uh, the, the pavilion now, the, the replacement of the seashell. Uh, all of those things have happened and they, everything has been upgraded and we've seen great results from that and, and great uh, returns on that. One of the other, other items that they recommended very, very strongly was that the beach concentrate some of its higher buildings in a few areas. They, didn't, they recommended don't do it everywhere we want to employ a thing called a floor area ratio, F-A-R. And they said up by the Ashworth and also down at the opposite end of the beach, on the southern end of the beach, that we should have a thing where for a given amount of floor space, footage on the, on the uh, footprint, we should be able to go up, say, four stories or five, whatever it was. And then in the middle, to protect the residential nature of the interior of what we all know is the banana, 
that it should be much less than that. It should be two to one, three or two or even one to one to protect all of that. The Beach Commission, which I chaired at that time, we brought it to the, to the planning board and, and tried to convince the planning board, since they would be the ones uh, to, to uh, bring this forward in the form of a warrant article, we asked them to implement this or to bring the, the article forward. And during the testimony that they received from residents, nobody complained about that being too high. That wasn't the complaint. The complaint came from the people in between those two high spots on the ends saying, why do they get to build something higher and I don't? They wanted it killed because they wanted to have the same ability to make money from their property as the people up on the two ends that could have built three, four, five story buildings or what have you. They wanted an equal shot at it. So the, the feeling of the people who testified at that time was that we don't object to the height, we just don't want to be left out of it because we know it's a good deal. And I just want to put that into context, that it's still a good deal in selected areas. And if we kept the same thing in mind, that we have specific spots where we looked at higher elevations because they worked. And it's, you know, everybody's heard the story about have you ever been to the solarium in the top of the, of the police station? You know, everybody thought that there was a great multi-story palace of some type. Well, everybody's been inside there, and you know that when you walk up from the second to the third floor, you get to the third floor, and you and a bunch of HVAC equipment are, are occupying a very small space. That is nothing but a, but a cosmetic trim on the top of the building. I would consider the, the uh, elevator tower to be the same thing. So when you're considering all of this, I think that the benefit far outweighs the problem of having a... Uh, elevator tower that's a couple feet too high. Thank you. Further public comment this evening? Yes, sir. <coughs> Bill Valley, 252 Landing Road. You know, when I was a kid, I wasn't allowed to get out on the beach. There was too many of us kids in my family, I guess, but now that I'm an older person, the beach, to me, is the best money-making business in this town. And if, and if the Shirley, where the Shirley was and the Vandermeer Hotel was, the, it's only going to benefit Hampton Beach and the town of Hampton to go up. It wouldn't bother me if it was a hundred feet. I can't see it from my house. I can tell you that. <laughs> but all I'm saying is that we should not. When we had McDonald's coming into town, that woman, she's gone now, chased them out almost because of the bushes they were going to put in front of it. I could never understand it. And then they wanted a sidewalk to have that business go all the way to Mill Road, if you remember right. McDonald's. If I was a, coming into this town, now the Green Company gave, they were given permission <coughs> to build a 50 foot or 60 foot building. He must have spent thousands and thousands of dollars to get to that point. Well, when I heard that from the zoning board, if I was him, I'd have gone <coughs> home and had a couple of drinks. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> and then, now we're going to sue each other. We're, I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. And I've been here 70 years, and I know it's happened before in this town. And it's crazy. It's just plain crazy. Thank you. Further public comment this evening? Going once. I couldn't let it go. Michael Green, Hampton, New Hampshire. Um, I just I wrote down a few comments just because I don't want to miss them, but it's pretty brief. Um, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money has been spent improving the beach, studying plans, trying to find a way to get the beach improved. I've heard many disparaging comments about the beach in the last 16 years I've lived here, some of which I, I many of which I won't repeat. Um, but the entire town has wanted to see this beach upgraded for years. It's been a conversation point with the selectmen for year after year after year. We now have an opportunity. It started to happen just before the 
economic downturn and you had two major projects that got approved die on the vine. We don't want to have it happen again. Right now it's we're, we're sitting in that little fragile spot where development is occurring, improvements starting to occur, there's buildings that just need to be renovated, knocked down, rebuilt, whatever it takes to improve that beach. And as it happens, you'll see an encouragement of what happens to the clientele of the beach. Do you want more tattoo parlors? Do you want more martial arts? Do you want more t-shirt shops? Probably not. I don't as a resident, and I w what I would like to see is an upgrade of the quality of the retail. I'd like to see uh, an increase in value, and frankly, I'd like to see my own property taxes on my house in Hampton go down. And the only way that's going to happen is if there's other revenue, because your costs aren't going down. So we have an opportunity to if we encourage development. Every time you put a roadblock in the way because it might affect somebody else's property next door, I mean, we don't have a lot of people complaining in this audience. So think about that. I know we have some dis disagreement on the board, but we don't have a lot of people in this room complaining about the development. We are sitting here trying to say, okay, we took one step with the sea spray. Now you're seeing uh, Lebec Rouge is being redeveloped. You're seeing work being done on McGurk's, you're seeing other properties <coughs> all over the beach taking those steps because somebody had to step out first. We have another opportunity to pick up this piece of the beach and see some improvements here and you'll see some of the the properties that are running fine and look good or in great shape, those <coughs> aren't the issues. It's the broken down ones. Take a drive down some of the lower streets, you know, the higher letter streets and you'll start seeing some areas that really need some improvement. Well. We're just trying to get that job done. Yes, it's a for-profit venture, okay? But it's also for-profit for the town because when you go from 2.6 million on an assessed value up to five, uh, 14 million, you're talking a 500% increase in taxable value, a 500% increase in the tax revenue to the town, 500% in dollars that all these residents don't have to pull out of their pocket to pay. And we have people that are willing to pay $475,000, $500,000 for a condominium unit. People for businesses that are willing to spend a half a million dollars to put their business in it. These aren't places that are going to become winter rental homes. These are going to have next to zero impact on the school system because they're probably going to be occupied maybe six months a year and they're, not, they're too expensive to be able to rent out to a winter rental. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Tracy Emmerich, 207 North Shore Road. Uh, I just wanted to make one point about the uh, the uh, zoning ordinances that it they now require retail on the first floor when there's condominiums above. I just wanted to reiterate that because we've been talking a lot about retail, retail, retail. That is a requirement. Uh, when the planning board put that forward, what we used as our model was Revere, where basically the condos have walled off uh, the boulevard. I mean, there, there is no retail there. So we intentionally have retail on the first floor of this and any other condominium development that goes down, or hotel that goes down, or still has to have retail, just as a point of order. Thank you. Thank you. Further public comment this evening? <coughs> Going twice. Last call. Thank you very much for your participation, folks. Moving on, we are going to Roman numeral number three. Announcements and community calendars. Select and Pierce, please. Uh, Good evening, and thank you for inviting us in again. Good um, evening. In, in terms of format, mm -hmm. please, each of you with the floor, and then we'll go around with, with the questionnaire. Thank you very much. Okay. So each of us report and yes, then questions. Okay. <coughs> As you know, it's this time of year when we are amending and passing bills back and forth between the houses for um, committees of conference or concurrence, and the budget being probably the biggest one that we're going to <coughs> see. So I'd just like to speak briefly about the budget and let you know that the capital budget and the Senate version of the capital budget, we have completely um, funded the uh, seawall down at the beach for $5 million. <coughs> mm -hmm. And I am pretty confident that it's going to stay there. Sorry. I have assurance that it will stay there. 
in the budget process, uh, you know, that there's three phases to the budget process. The governor presents her budget, then the House uh, does reviews it and, and puts forth theirs, and the Senate puts forth theirs. And we've made some adjustments to the House budget in the Senate, and I think we've come out with a pretty good budget. It is $10.7 million, about 3% uh, over last bienniums when we had to make some drastic cuts. We have been able, because of the revenue increases, to restore some of those cuts that we had to make last year. A lot of them had to do ha having to do with the education, uh, both the university the, uh, and the um, uh, community colleges. We've, we've restored the UNIQUE fund, which is for uh, low-income students to be able to go to college. And we have increased by $4 million uh, to those communities that were shortchanged in the 105% in the, uh, growth. Hampton being one of those communities, we have moved that to 108% growth. So they're allowed to grow a little bit more than they were originally allowed to grow in the uh, adequacy budget uh, formula. Uh, we fully funded the DD wait list and um, we maintained the uh, level of funding for CHINs, children in need of services that the House had. Uh, important to Hampton is that the state aid grants, the Senate has put in an additional uh, $4.5 million, a little over $4.5 million in the first year of the biennium so that those projects that, that you have applied for and are on the list for should be funded. So as long as we can keep that in the budget, when it goes back to the House, we'll be all set for that. Um, and we also fully funded the payment in lieu of taxes for municipalities with land in flood control compact. So I don't know if Hampton's in a flood control compact or not, but that has been fully funded as well. Now you know that the Senate indefinitely postponed the gas tax. I will tell you that uh, in addition to myself, there's uh, another senator and we're working with a couple of representatives in the House <coughs> and we are committed to come forward next year with some sort of a plan to address our roads and bridges and I've insisted that betterment be part of that plan. So I want you to know that even though it looks like death. It's not dead yet. So, The meals and rooms tax, uh, you know that twice now I've tried to change the formula for the meals and rooms, rooms tax so to get more money back to the communities that uh, generate the uh, re uh, revenue. And, I, and I, again, I've also worked on the uh, constitutional amendment for, for schools. And I see those really as working together because <coughs> if you can get more money back to the c communities that generate the, the revenue through meals and rooms tax, then you're rewarding those communities that do the work, and the, which is a, co a cost to the taxpayer. And on the constitutional <coughs> amendment, if you can get more money back to those lower communities that don't have the tax base, I think then you're rewarding those. I see the education funding as funding students' education and then providing uh, community uh, support. I see those as two separate pieces. So that's what I've been working on. Um, one of the questions that was asked to me was <coughs> what was my concept of uh, developing local guidelines in RSA 50, uh, 79E? And if you look at uh, 79E5, colon mm -hmm. 5, uh, it it uh, specifically refers to adopting local guidelines as it relates to the time for tax relief. Uh, some of the language in the statute is specific, but uh, if it is a de desire of this board, I would be glad to find out if there are other communities, what they have developed for guidelines, so you could use them as a base to, to um, kind of sp peel off on uh, as far as the time that you allow for deferment uh, under 79E. Hmm. If that's something you'd like me to do, I'd be glad to do that for you. But that's what the um, guidelines refers to is the time, whether it's two years, three years, five years, hmm. whether you extend it for another two years. And if you develop those guidelines, then you're, you're being fair to everyone who applies. Um, let's see. The court decision on retirement that came out the other day, I will share with you that that will be appealed. And it will be appealed to the superior, uh, to the Supreme Court, uh, hopefully to hold off any impact for the local communities. Um, other questions that you have asked, such as uh, the cl bar closing times, and uh, um, that the Senate amended the pollution control, and the ways forward, other representatives are going to speak to that so that we can share that uh, whole process. And I'll take any questions after they're all done that you have. Okay. Next.
Yeah, up. Thank you very much. As I, as Diana was talking about, you know, the way too much fun camp. And I, I know you're all of tremendous notoriety, but please <laughs> identify yourself. Oh, yes, excuse me. So I represent Rennie Cushing. Um, and thank you very much for having us here. I just want to uh, report on a, on a couple of things. Uh, legislation passed last week. Uh, the House concurred with the Senate amendments on the legislation concerning the uh, uh, using on the official ballot using summaries of ordinances, which mm -hmm. is something that the our town manager was good in in coming and help testify on, and also passed uh, House Bill 130, uh, another bill, um, which would uh, adjust the amount of time for solid waste district bonding decisions that are made by SB2 towns, and those are two pieces of Hampton legislation that are now on their way to the governor's desk. Um, I want to talk about, you know, kind of follow up on Nancy on my um, on a piece of legislation that I had that simply asked that the amount of revenue that's collected in uh, meals and rooms taxes by each community be made public, be that so that our communities would have an idea of how much revenue is being generated in in the in our communities. Um, ran into a bit of a problem with the division of revenue, the DRA, which opposed the legislation. Um, and the reason that the DRA opposed the legislation is because it said that it could have, um, for them to release that information may uh, reveal proprietary information about some businesses in some communities. I, I pointed out that there's no way that I'm going to be able to tell from the town of Hampton um, how much meals and rooms taxes come gets paid from this community to the state. I'm not going to be able to identify any individual business on how well they're doing. And I'd suggested that, um, that there may be some kind of a, a cap, uh, you know, minimum amount of money that's generated in a community that anything above that amount you'd, r you'd, you'd reveal how much came from Hampton, how much came from Portsmouth. Um, but uh, the, di the numbers in the state are such that I think the communities that don't generate a lot of meals and rooms taxes don't have an interest in having the amount of money that's, that's generated in communities like ours that does revealed. Um, and that was, a, it was pretty disappointing because I remember talking to Chairman Bean about this and it seemed like this is the kind of information we ought to be able to get so that we can make decisions in our community about long-term infrastructure planning and have an idea what, you know, how we're doing on our local investment. Um, that didn't go very well. So um, another qu t subject that was brought up is the issue of, uh, you know, of uh, the mandated um, exemption from taxes that the, the state has imposed upon communities in the form of uh, you know, pollution control exemptions, and that's something that uh, Rep uh, Selectman Nichols has been really wonderful in providing guidance on. Um, we introduced a, a bill that would have um, put an end to the so-called pollution control tax exemptions that is depriving Hampton of a half million dollars in, in, in revenue and a number of other communities a, a year in tax revenue. And also, you know, it's taking money from the state. Um, Again, interestingly enough, there were forces that were aligned that uh, came to testify in opposition to that, to the removal of that exemption. Uh, as I got into this issue, I found out that when the when the the law was originally passed, that uh, allowed exemption from local property taxes or from property taxes for the installation of pollution control devices, that uh, it had a limit of 25 years. Um, which, of course, would have meant that the, the power pro plant that, uh, at Seabrook would have, it's so more than 25 years old, the, all, the, all the equipment would be into the local property tax base. And somehow, mysteriously, in 1997, that law got changed so that the 25 years limit was removed. And now, essentially, it's, um, it's a lifetime exemption which is almost creates a perverse incentive to keep, you know, 10, 20, 30-year-old equipment supposedly for pollution control, um, you know, in place. And the bill, <coughs> we had a, a long discussion with the uh, Municipal and County Government Committee about this. Uh, we, you know, we worked with Mary Beth Waltz, who's a, a representative from, uh, the, represents the town of Bow that also has a similar interest in making sure that all revenues are included um, in the property tax base. The committee uh, decided to retain the bill um, 
the people the committee hasn't just finished its work it hasn't started up taking up the retained bills yet but I think we're going to work together and, and our, our latest thinking is that what we simply should do is go back to the law as it was originally written mm -hmm. and put the 25 year uh, cap in place um, you know because what, what what really is happening is that all all everybody else in the community all property taxpayers end up subsidizing this you know large tax exempt portion of, uh, of of equipment, and um, you know that's just not fair. And so that was something I, I had been involved in doing. And um, I mean, we could talk a lot about the the budget, um, and we could talk about uh, ways that we would might raise revenue. There's a little difference between the Senate and the House concerning not just providing money for uh, you know through the through the gasoline tax, but also through cigarettes. Um, there was the House would wanted to increase its cigarette tax, and the Senate decided it wasn't going to do that. And as a consequence, I think we're we we really have a revenue problem that I think that we have to deal with at some point. Um, <laughs> and, <coughs> and, uh, and, and and the only other thing that I would say is that just personally that I've been working on is trying to uh, give authority to the superintendent of the <coughs> of the jail of the house of corrections to release um in a release uh based upon his judgment uh prisoners from the county facility um before their 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 time is up or to find an alternative ways to use bracelets and to <coughs> get them out that's one of those things that uh you know all misdemeanors get punishment for all misdemeanors get puts right on the property taxpayers and sometimes we do shifting all the time um, that it doesn't seem like we're doing anything in Concord but we're really by not doing something we, we put a burden upon the local property taxpayers and you know that's a, a, you know another similar thing I, I I'm, I'm, <coughs> I'm sorry to report but the budget does not include um, monies for the, the to meet the state's uh, share of the local pension uh, contributions uh, that was totally eliminated two years ago. I went before the had a discussion with the, with House Finance about why we couldn't put that back in. There was no money, and I know that the Senate did the same thing. And I would just I'll, I'll bear bad news. It's not going to come. And I'll take any other questions. I'll sh share my comments. Thank you. Um, <coughs> one thing I think is, is important as we address these issues for you. Um, to some degree, depending on how busy we are on the committees, we don't see an awful lot outside the committee unless it's something that you have specifically asked us to sponsor and follow through. And Chris and I serve on the same committee, in com on, on the Commerce Committee, and uh, we've had, what was about 90 bills or so out of 10% of the, all the bills that come through the House. And a lot of ours have been involved with insurance uh, matters. Uh, there have been an awful lot of bills that had to do with the winemaking industry, and because uh, uh, the, the committee has oversight over the, the uh, uh, liquor commission and so forth, uh, we were tremendously uh, bogged down, if you will, or I don't know what you call it, with the auto dealers' bill of rights, uh, the uh, total rewrite of the corporation law in New Hampshire. So some of these took up just huge chunks of time. So the ability to look outside the blinders was not very great. Mm. Uh, this time. So I apologize if I don't have uh, an encyclopedic uh, um, knowledge of all of these things that have gone on up there, but uh, sometimes you lift your head up a little bit and it's uh, you get a duck again because the fire keeps coming in. A um, couple of the things that um, uh, uh, that, that I uh, was involved in uh, outside of just the Commerce Committee stuff, um, one was what I call the Jerry McConnell bill. Uh, Jerry came to me and said, gee, I can't bring my wife's absentee ballot to the town clerk, mm -hmm. but I can take it outside and I can put it in the mailbox out here. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a fairly long, involved uh, process to go through uh, the uh, election <coughs> law and so forth. Uh, and, it, and it went through the Senate. Uh, the Senate, uh, Senator Stiles did uh, everything she could to help us through with that. Um, it basically was to be able to put a stamp on the, the end result is to be able to put a stamp on the outside envelope that the individual says, I hereby authorize so-and-so, and then it was, is it going to be caregiver, guardian, spouse, or whatever. It started just spouse, so that at the last minute, if you couldn't uh, get the, the um, thing in through the mail, you could take it in and give it to the clerk. Well, through all of the negotiations, as always happened, we came full circle on it. It went from spouse to caregiver to guardian, and then it went from every situation. It came back down 
with the final uh, modification of it in the, uh, when it got over to the Senate, um, and all the committees were were very much in favor of this thing. They just know how to, they just were <laughs> arguing over nitpicky little things on wordsmithing. Uh, so it, it basically now uh, the Senate has amended it, uh, they've approved it, and it's going to come back over for us to uh, recommend uh, concurrence or the committee to recommend, and I'm sure that they will. Uh, what it is now is, is you have to have a signature on <coughs> the absentee ballot itself, you have to have one on the envelope, and that has to be checked against the uh, voting ro rolls, which were done some time ago, to make sure that's the same person. And it is only for spouses, and it is only within the week. Yeah. Uh, prior, roughly week prior to the actual election. So at least it's going to be easier for people who have uh, mobility problems or anything else to be able to get in there. It, that was an interesting odyssey uh, with this, with that particular bill, though, because it went, it went 17 ways from Sunday. Um, the advisor to our uh, trustees of the trust fund, uh, uh, Mr. Mackinson, uh, came to us with a, uh, a bill uh, on the management of trust funds and capital reserve funds. He wanted to have the same procedures put in uh, for trust funds that are used for capital reserve funds. They were not huge changes, uh, but to get to it, the words <coughs> we had to put in was a lot of words mm -hmm. to, to do a fairly simple one. It was retained. It was felt to be a good bill. Uh, but it needs some work before the language is clear, and that's what the um, effort of that committee is going to be. Um, another one was uh, municipal charters, the uh, one on, on uh, uh, Selectman uh, Moore's uh, uh, brought this one up about uh, let's get the uh, municipal charters uh, uh, updated so we can have a little more time if we're going to implement something like a charter commission so we take a one-year process, expand it out to two so that there's enough time. There's a hearing on that next week. It was originally retained and now it's going to be reheard. I believe this was it. I yeah. think it's retained still. Say again? I think it's still retained. Still, yeah, it's still retained, but it's supposed to be. Uh, somebody mentioned this morning there's going to be a hearing on it next week. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that one, we'll see what happens on that one. Um, and then the other one, oh gosh, uh, that's the majority of some of them. Um, uh, I, you heard. Uh, Representative uh, Cushing's uh, position on, on the budget. I <coughs> smiled a little bit when that came up because he says we have a revenue problem. I say we have a spending problem. Um, but it's, um, I, I think it comes from where you start out. And I think that this is where we can be, we can disagree on an agreeable basis. Um, from, our, from the right side of the aisle, the perspective is that the, the Democrats care to go forward and say this is what we need to do. There's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely good. This is what we need to do, and this is how much money we need to spend on it. When they make that decision, then they are forced to go look for how they're going to cover all of that. Is the existing revenue sufficient, or do we need to raise a tax, uh, uh, put a cap on something, whatever they, they do to raise that money to cover it. On the right side of the aisle, what, was, what happened two years ago, we first went out and said, how much money are we going to have? Ways and Means went out and said, what is a reasonable estimate of the uh, state income for the next two years? Now, within that, let's go out and spend the money. And the two don't always match. It's a different philosophy, basically, on how you're going to go about doing the requirements of the state. And it's a matter of, um, I think that the GOP's uh, position requires a lot more prioritization, uh, and it doesn't always come out to be a, a popular one. And uh, so some of the some of your favorite projects, if it involves money at all, sometimes it doesn't uh, doesn't come out quite the way uh, you wanted it. Um, if it uh, requires the need and the need is glaring enough, then it's going to get funded anyway, and uh, then it'll have to come out of someplace else though, because there might be a cut. So I think these are some of the considerations in there that. Uh, and, and the other thing too that we face. We're in a relatively big, bustling community that provides a lot of rooms and meals tax, uh, business profits tax, and so forth to the state. But it goes into different cubby holes in the state. <laughs> to try and get that, Senator Stiles' effort to try and get that apportioned out better so that Hampton doesn't really get screwed on it by giving a lot and not getting much back. Remember, we've got to convince 200 plus other towns that it's just as important to them as it is to the five of us. And we're it. And sometimes those little towns, Hart's Location and uh, Dunbarton and places like that, they don't care. They have one little local bar, and they're not going to send that much to the state. But their, <coughs> their comeback is based on their year-round population, 
And they like that money. They really do like that money. So they're not going to vote to change that to favor Hampton. So when that's brought forward, it has to be on a very, very balanced basis. And you're kind of walking on eggshells uh, when that happens. Um, and uh, the only other one, the uh, just uh, the person covers more detail. I, I just think the biggest thing on the uh, bar closing that's Let strictly an, take that. yeah, that's that's strictly <laughs> on an opt-in, and he will <laughs> enter that. Uh, and I'll take your questions out. Not, not that we rehearsed this at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, HB, uh, again for everyone at home. My name is Representative Chris Munns. Um, HP 575, that's the, um, the infamous bar bill. Um, it, uh, it came out of the Commerce Committee that, that Fred and I serve on as a opt-out bill where a community um, could decide that they didn't want to move to 2 a.m. The, the closing time now for bars is 1 a.m. Uh, it came out of the Commerce Committee as we're going to increase that to 2 a.m. unless a town opts out of it. The Senate um, took a different approach they changed it to an opt-in bill so that a town has to take um, specific action to increase the, um, the time to 2 a.m. Um, the House Com Commerce Committee met last week. We met last week. Uh, we concurred with the Senate's um, amendment. So it will be on the floor of the House on uh, Wednesday. It will probably be adopted. And then it goes to the governor, and, and it would be, uh, be implemented. Um, and I would be remiss in saying if, if I didn't say that, you know, I, I voted against it both in the committee and um, on the floor. I just didn't think it was something that was necessary, but the, uh, the majority spoke, and um, so now we move forward. Um, with respect to uh, the, uh, the pension funding ruling, um, um, you, you know, I, I, uh, I, I heard what, what Senator Stiles said about, about it being uh, appealed. That, that doesn't surprise me. I would fully expect that. Um, the only thing that I would add to that is I, I think this was a decision or a case that needed to be decided so that the dialogue could continue. Until this case was resolved, I, didn't, I don't think there was anybody willing to really talk any more about you know, what we need to be doing. So hopefully, once it is resolved, we can then start a, uh, another discussion about what needs to be done on a long-term basis to address this issue because um, it is something that you know, we can't avoid and it is impacting not only Hampton but all other communities. Um, Senator Stiles talked about the seawall, um, and I'm, I'm <coughs> thrilled that um, she was able to get some additional monies put into the uh, into the Senate bill for that. Um, I think it's necessary, and I, I believe it'll be enough money to finish the whole project, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, at the same time, um, Senator Stiles introduced <laughs> a couple bills to look at or give give towns in the state the ability to start looking at the longer term um, issues re regarding uh, coastal protection mm. which I think is 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 very important and um, um, I think all of us spoke to that bill on the floor of the house uh, in support of it um, because I think it's the kind of dialogue that we need to start now so that the next time we have to repair the wall maybe we're in a position where we can do something that's going to be, you know, provide lo longer term protection than just, you know, having to do this every five or ten years or whatever. So I, I think that's a good positive step. And uh, so thank you, uh, Senator Stiles, for taking <coughs> the lead on that. Um, the gas tax, um, you know, I'm glad to hear that um, we're going to be um, hopefully revisiting that again next year. Um, I think it's important for you all to understand and for the people at home to understand that, um, that, the, that the version of the bill that the House passed would have, would have given Hampton uh, over half a million dollars um, between 2014 and 2023. Um, the bill specifically doubled the amount of state assistance for municipal bridges and state highway uh, and, and, and highway support. So. Um, you know, if that's not going to be in the budget this year, that's a lost opportunity for us. But hopefully, going forward, um, you know, we'll we'll be able to recover some of that. And um, it shouldn't be any any surprise to anyone that I I might have a little slightly different view of the budget than Representative Rice. Um, <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> Who'd have thought? Um, I, I will I will say before I I, I mention that that um, it has been um, it has been. Um, um, Refreshing and but also slightly terrifying to see how many times Fred and I agree on bills in the <laughs> Commerce Committee. <laughs> so um, and and I'm sure he's as frightened about that as I am because I keep telling people I'm going to ruin my reputation. Um, 
you know, with th there's obviously a lot. Um, there are a lot of differences in the between the House budget and the Senate budget. Um, I'm not going to pretend to say that I've looked at all of the details of the Senate budget because I haven't. Um, I guess the one thing that I would point out um, is that um, the Senate budget is $195 million less than the House budget over two years. And there is a significant reduction in the amount of federal funds that the Senate budget um, uh, includes in, in their budget. Um, and there are things that are not funded, um, such as expanding Medicaid, getting that up and running, providing money to uh, help people understand uh, the new health care bill, which is going to really start kicking in, in November, on October 1st. And, and you know, quite frankly, it's going to be very confusing for people. Um, that is, that's money that's there that's been appropriated by the federal government <coughs> that's waiting for states to take it. And if we don't take it, it's just money that's going to go to another, uh, another state. And, um, you know, it's also lost, a lost investment in the state because that money will generate economic activity and, and, and hopefully help create some jobs. So um, I'm hoping that we can put some of that back into the budget when it comes to conference committee um, um, so that we can take advantage of that. Uh, last point that I'll, I'll touch on is, um, and, and I think it's an example of how um, legislators can work together regardless of party affiliation. Um, all of us at this table, uh, as well as all of the state representatives from both parties, from Northampton, from Rye, Greenland, Portsmouth, Newcastle, um, we've all been working together on trying to secure the, old, the abandoned um, Hampton Branch Railway line, that property, trying to secure that um, uh, so that the, uh, the state can acquire it. Um, before we do anything with that property or before any, you know, we can do any planning on that property, you have to get control of the property. Um, there is money available um, from the federal government. There's some matching money that we believe is available from the state that so that we can purchase the land from Pan Am. And then um, if that happens, I think that opens up a tremendous opportunity for us to have a real detailed discussion about what we do with that land. And there's a lots of different ideas. And I'm not sure that everybody at this table necessarily agrees with what we need to do. But I think we're all on the same page that, you know, before we start having that fight, we need to at least get the land. So um, <laughs> uh, so we're making, we're making progress. And I think, you know, the fact that we've sent a couple letters with you know, 10, 10 or 12 signatures on it that's had some weight with the state. So mm -hmm. hopefully that's going to um, benefit us all in the future. Well, I'll tell you what. May, may, I, may I just interrupt for a second, please, Representative? Uh, there's a former hockey player from Hingham, Massachusetts that has a score to announce. <laughs> please, sir. What's that? The score. Oh, four to one Bruins. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. Is that what's on TV? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's on the back end. But you're the guys who announced a loss, if I recall, a couple of weeks ago. Pardon me, sir. Go ahead. That's right. Uh, Representative Memrick, uh, when you're the cleanup hitter, you don't have a lot of things to cover. <laughs> but I, I, I will say I had one at bat. Uh, this year I did file one bill having to do with backflow valves. I know it's an exciting topic, uh, oh. uh, but it was an annoying topic for the uh, uh, business uh, properties that I own because these <coughs> backflow valves were designed, I've learned, to leak. Oh. Uh, by design they leak. And so uh, I went and looked at the statute that ha requires these things, and it didn't say who had to have them. It just said what they were and how often you had to have them inspected. <coughs> well, after traveling through the PUC to the DES, uh, uh, I got to know a lot of people along the way, none of whom were really interested in much of anything. You know, don't change a thing. We like it just the way it is. Uh, and I said, yeah, but the statute doesn't say who has to have one of these things, but I'm being required to have one. And, that, and have them inspected twice a year at $75 a pop. And so the DES finally did uh, decide to get on board. Uh, we did uh, write some legislation that has passed the House and the Senate, and it's on its way to the governor, that says that people who could uh, be harmful to the municipal water system uh, have to have uh, a backflow valve. Now, for the people of Hampton, who are as annoyed with these things as I am, you can now go to Aquarian and have it determined whether you are, in fact, that dangerous to the water system. You're going to have to have a backflow valve because they're not going to let you get out of it. But you don't have to have the one that leaks. 
so, uh, so I've changed both of mine, and, and so I, I feel fairly accomplished from my one at bats. Um, as far as the budget goes, I have to tell you, and I, I, I think uh, Representative Munz brought it up, uh, it's fairly chaotic because uh, we get inundated with information and it's like looking at a little yeah. looking through a little crack into something that's going on out there uh, so I, what I did is I finally got my hands on a copy this is the Senate's version uh, of the budget and I'd be glad to give you all a copy just so you can see what it looks like because I didn't get this until a couple of days ago because I didn't know what it looked like and we're talking about uh, this one's $150 million less, this one's $300 million more. What? Uh, you know, what is? And so this is the line by line budget uh, of the Senate. And I'll, I'll leave copies for you of both the uh, total funds and the general fund. Uh, uh, just to take a look at it. I'm not, I can't defend it, believe me. Because uh, I just, this is the first time I've really seen it on a piece of paper. Uh, that's that's manageable uh, on a spreadsheet so I'll be glad to leave copies of that uh, one of the things we did discuss this morning when we met for the, about this evening <coughs> is we would like to have an opportunity for uh, citizens who would like to have bills introduced our time frame for filing for 2014 is September 9th to September 27th so by that time we have to have the ideas of what legislation citizens would like you would like uh, so if, I, I don't know that we wanted to do it at this meeting or another meeting, but we would like to have an opportunity uh, for citizens to let us know what, what they would like to have happen. Talked about August. Yeah, yeah we, we actually talked about trying to have a meeting in August um, and invite obviously any town officials and members of the public just for the you know the, for the five of us to have a conversation about ideas and Excellent. we'll see how it goes forward. I didn't believe said August. Yeah, that's when the saw went on upstairs. <laughs> 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 oh, if that's something we could we want to present to the board to get your feedback on. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Slipman Pierce. I uh, was going to follow up on a couple of questions. You're talking about the cigarette and the gas tax, and I can see where some people don't want more taxes, and I can see where we might want to increase taxes to do some more spending. I'm not going to get into that philosophical discussion, but. Has anybody ever done a study that works with, if we increase the gas tax by so much, how will that affect the tourism business? Has anybody ever done one of those? Mommy, let me ask another question while you're there before you answer. If we increase the <coughs> cigarette tax, how much will that affect our border sales? Has anybody done a study on that? Yes. 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 They've done studies on both of there those? There was testimony yeah. on both of those, yeah. on both sides of both of those. Mm -hmm. And what did they find out with increasing the gas tax? Well, who wants yeah. to go first? Well, go ahead. You can answer. Well, I'll take it. You know, New Hampshire hasn't increased the gas tax since 1994. Um, okay. And what they, the study showed that, that there's a very wide variation in what the prices of gas are. That it's yeah. kind of inelastic. And yeah. the, what, where gas is more expensive, doesn't matter where, it's closer to the borders. Yeah. Uh, because the, they, they it kind of adjust itself, um, <coughs> and it's just it doesn't really have any impact upon, you know, upon uh, it's sales. Not, it's market driven. Yeah, it's market driven. So if you're in an area where you can sell your gas for three dollars and sixty-two cents, that's what the price will be today. And if you're in another area that you can only get three dollars and fifty cents, that's what that gas will be. And it'll be the same gasoline brand of gasoline. I, I've driven I've driven back from Concord on a day when I filled up with gas in Concord at, at three dollars and forty cents, let's say, and halfway down I happened to come down Route Four one day, which I usually don't, but I did this day, and I saw it up around three fifty. I got back down here and it was about in between. It was about three forty five. So it is very, very market driven. And I, and I think it's important to also recognize that even with if the increase that had been proposed had gone through, the tax in New Hampshire would still be, I think, the lowest in New, in New England. Mm -hmm. So our, the price of our gas would still be significantly lower than other states. Well, I think that's always been a touristy draw that we've always sort of looked at as being reasonable gas prices. In but New I, I, think, I think the other thing that you have to look at when you're talking about the impact on tourism uh -huh. is, um, you know, what impact will there be on tourism if the roads are lousy, <coughs> if the bridges fall down, yeah. um, and, and I think that's the bigger picture that um, we really need to focus on and that I think we're losing sight of. I mean, we have not 
as Rennie said, we haven't increased the gas tax since 1994. The cost of asphalt alone has just gone through the roof, mm -hmm. and it's 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 that much more expensive now to maintain the roads than it was before. <coughs> when this gas tax was put in, they, they call it the road toll. Right. When it was put in, it was supposed to be all devoted toward maintenance and upkeep and repair of highways. Mm -hmm. Along the line, <coughs> better than 30% of that has been carved out for the state police and other items, rest Thank areas you. and stuff yeah. like that. One of the most that's one of the most significant oppositions to, the, to this bill uh, was in the House and, it was, and a, a proposed amendment was brought up that said if you took the existing road toll mm -hmm. and you devoted 100% of it yeah. to roads and repair and so, f so forth and let the state police get their own line item in the budget the way they used to and the way they should, mm -hmm. we wouldn't need this type of an increase. Mm -hmm. We might need a little increase, maybe none at all, but whatever, but it certainly wouldn't be what it is. It started out being the increased road toll, there would also, the same percentage would go to the state police. Started thirty percent. Well, they cut that out, and uh, that got amended back out of it, so it made it a little more palatable. But it still didn't do anything to the stuff that's in there right now, and that was one of the biggest sticking points. One of the main reasons why it didn't pass. Thank you. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just say, actually, not. I want to disagree with with Fred, but the bill that was introduced by Representative Campbell to increase the the road toll um, would have taken, and it would have used the money, it, the increase would have exclusively gone for three things, to finish 93, to fix all the uh, redlined uh, ro you know, bridges, and a, thir and a third of it would have gone directly to the local communities because, as we know, the property tax is the only way that, th that we seem to have to fix our local roads, and this was a way that the state has the ability to capture the revenue by the, it's a really a user fee is what we're talking about. Um, and that's what Representative Campbell's bill did and that's what we passed in the House. Well, as far as the cigarette tax goes, uh, New Hampshire's cigarette tax has always been lower than any of the <coughs> adjoining states. And it was interesting in the discussion that on the Senate floor, <coughs> one of my fr uh, friendly colleagues was promoting the, the cigarette tax <coughs> and she said, you know, by increasing the tax, it decreases the amount of people who buy yes. cigarettes. Yeah. And I'm saying, okay, if you're going to increase the tax and you're going to decrease the amount who are going to buy it, where does that leave you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, does that leave you in the middle or does it leave you lower? So um, the, the tax is going to go up 10 cents automatically anyway. That was in the last, last session's provision that if the revenue was not there, that it would automatically go up 10 percent. So it'll go up 10 percent anyway. 10 cents, not 10 percent. 10, ten, ten, ten cents, thank you. Um, it'll probably be part of the discussion in the committee conference. If nothing else, the law of unintended consequences always appears on many, many bills. Mm -hmm. And the cigarette tax was one of them the last time. We cut it, and the, the, the legislature cut it, and nobody realized that the cigarette companies were going to come back in and put that 10 cents right back in on well, their end of it, mm. so it didn't do much at all. Yeah, well, so that was the law of unintended consequences. Well, some people recognized that that was going to happen, Fred. <laughs> 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 and that's exactly what did happen. The price did not change. The tax got, they dropped the tax by 10 cents, and the price remained the same. And all the money that, instead of going to state coffers, it went right to the tobacco companies. Yeah. I just have one more, and I'll, I'll get off the pot. Uh, opt in or opt out? How did in the bill end up with the l bars till two o'clock? Right, opt in or opt, opt out? You have to opt in. You have to opt in. You've got to choose no, 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 to no. do it. No, you have to opt out. No, no. It's automatic. So it's not automatic. Not two automatic. Two o'clock. No, no, no. It's, it's enabled. Okay, got it. You Thank can you. if you want, but you've got to say I Sorry. want to. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You've got to put forth an, uh, an ordinance to allow that. Give me a ward article. New new ward article. So you've got that protection in there if you don't want to do it. I don't see him. That's all I have. To, thank you. Thank you, Selectman Pierce. Selectman Moore. Good evening. I think it's very unfortunate the gas tax has uh, not been passed. I think the uh, state highway system needs it. Mm. I think it's absolutely ridiculous to bring up the 30% carve out principally for Department of Safety when that was done 15 years ago to balance budgets because we don't have a revenue problem in New Hampshire. We cut the funding to the pension system because we don't have a revenue problem in New Hampshire. And we cut the percentage share of the rooms and meals tax that goes to communities because we, what did I say? Oh, we don't have a revenue problem in New Hampshire. Um, I do hope that you seriously consider the, re the 
the gasoline tax change in 2014 if it's already too late for 2013. And the one thing that hasn't been mentioned enough, and I hope it does come up in a year where you don't have a budget uh, that's uh, necessary, is uh, something, some long-term strategy to look at the New Hampshire retirement system because mm -hmm. yeah. I think our most recent rate that starts July the 1st, uh, 2013 for firefighters is 27% mm -hmm. of their salary goes to the New Hampshire retirement system. And quite frankly, if we have a need for additional firefighters, we can't afford to hire them. And, um, and that pressure is always going to be there. So you need to do something. You need to maintain the promises that have been made to existing employees, but you need to set up a mechanism mm -hmm. that can take care of this issue um, in the long term. And hopefully, uh, your actions on the budget will not uh, further increase the property taxes in Hampton as it has done in the last few years. Yeah. That's all I got. Thank you, sir. Vice Chairman Nichols, please. Yeah, a couple. Um, Senator Stiles, you mentioned uh, the SAG grants, mm -hmm. and my recollection was that when when the budget left the House, there was money in for two, the, the second year, the buying in, but not the first. Correct. And then you mentioned that there's the Senate has now put whatever you said, four point four. A little over four point five million. Four point five million and for four. So there's now, at least in the Senate version, money in both fourteen and fifteen. Right. Okay. Um, second uh, question is: I saw two different um, newspaper reports on the uh, liquor opt-in one of which stated that it had to be approved by the legislative body and the other stated that it had to be approved by the governing body and I was just curious which it was. I'll have to go back and uh, there's a big difference in Hampton. Yeah. Maybe not You're in talking about the, the uh, pushing it from one o'clock to two o'clock? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's the local governing body. So it's, it, it's governed, so in other words, <laughs> theoretically the yeah. selectmen could so approve it as opposed to the ordinance. No, governing no, body is the selectman. No, I, I, the, the, the governing body is the selectman. That I know. No. <laughs> no, I think the intent was that it had to go to the, the town. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. So then it would be yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. legislative body. Yeah. Yeah. Again, there's, there's, yeah. uh, right. there's two separate. You I couldn't see online the language <coughs> of, you know, with the amendment or whatever. It wasn't up to date. And like I said, there were two separate newspaper reports, one of which said legislative body, another of which said the governing. So I'll check that out tomorrow. Okay. And send it back to you. The, 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 um, the most important feature on that is that the, the committee as a, as a whole, the, the majority of the committee felt that the making an, an, an enable, a piece of enabling. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, so I think you I could th do it. That was important because some places do want it. Yeah, yeah. The no, cities I, probably do. I, I Most places was, probably will not. I think that was good, and I hope, That's I hope I find out that it's the legislative body, not the governing body yeah. that has that authority. Um, final is just a, a comment. I just want to thank um, Rennie for his enthusiasm on HB 672. and. Hopefully, you know, you know where it's retained in committee or whatever. I think that was perceived by most people that have been involved with this issue, this issue in, in recent years as a victory of yeah. sorts because it hadn't made it that far before. And let's you know, <coughs> let's keep at it going forward. Thank you, Selectman Wolsey. What's the total debt service for the state? I mean, Hampton's carrying 35 million in debt. What's what's our debt service? Mm -hmm. So that has an impact. Yeah, I, try to, I, I know that the, that our bonding limit is the treasurer said keep it to 130 million dollars. I can't. Uh, I don't have the cap in front of me. Know what the debt? You don't know how for. much of the 130 million we're on the hook for now. She's got basically. Seat. Oh, yeah. I don't know. We thought you memorized me. that, Tracy. Yeah. 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 Numbers yeah. to me. Debt service. Okay. Okay. Well, there you go. Thank Help you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's my well, answer. Actually, but this I, I do recall. The executive summary. I take it. Can't hear Renny. <laughs> no, I do recall that the the, the, the treasurer set you know, set $130 million and the treasurer actually was able to, uh, you know, obtain re by refinancing some of the existing so debt. Bundled. She bundled, yeah, she so bundled it bundled. And, 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 re and has refinanced it and has saved the state money on its debt service. Because you've got a lot Because we're getting less than a 1%. We're getting a 1%. Yeah, she's got a lot so less right. lower interest rates. Um, Seawall. I have, and I had a very brief discussion on the seawall with Chris and, and uh, oh, I guess it was Fred and, and Emery, uh, Fred and Tracy, and uh, Senator Stiles from at the HBAC meeting. I, it, I know we have to replace 
the still damaged part of the seawall from 13th Street North. But it really hurts me to spend five million dollars repairing that section of the wall and then talking about a commission to figure out what's going to happen when the storms are probably going to get worse and worse and worse. It looks to me like stalling. Well, it's kind of like stopping the bleeding. You've got to stop the bleeding and prevent it from deteriorating worse Further. or your expenses are going to be yeah, far, right. far worse. And, you know, Nancy and I don't agree on the subject of global warming, but we both agree well, and we have all spoken about... Whatever is causing it. But we have all talked about the fact that whatever the cause, there's a lot more storm activity. Yes. And if we don't sit and take a comprehensive look at it, yeah. we're not going to do it right. And to right. do not enough, you're only going to get one shot at doing it right. And it's very important that we... But it be thought out and planned properly. It's a little surprising though, Fred. I mean, this has been going on for a long time. I think Richard, who goes by the ocean a lot more than I do, was saying, what, those <laughs> stairwells were really filled up with rocks and the rocks came really high to the existing wall? It's, it's about time somebody in Concord okay. thought about protecting. I know you guys mentioned that, I think, when you first sit down, about protecting our, our oceanfront property. Just, just a thought. Um, Something that and I looked in the statute, and I think the planning the uh, planning board is RSA 676, and I should have brought my statutory reference with me. We're having a discussion, uh, which you heard earlier, on the property at 335, 340, 339, 345 Ocean Boulevard, the potential build by Green and Company. And there uh, were remarks made that, well, nobody showed up at the hearing. And when I started doing a little research, I discovered that the requirement to notify abutters just says notify abutters. But what I'm finding is happening, particularly at the beach in Hampton, I, I guess we're sending a notice to the president of the Condominium Association. Yes, but you correct. have 10, 20, 30 mm -hmm. individual owners and what happened in one instance this year was that the president of the condo association happened to have been relocated to Florida for the winter and by the time the thing got forwarded, et cetera, et cetera, <coughs> the hearing was done. So people had no opportunity. What I would like to see done is some corrective legislation that's more specific and, and you guys were addressing this a little earlier too. A, the developer, to the best of my understanding, is the one who pays for the notices to abutters. Correct. If the developer is going to pay for notices to the abutters, please have the developer pay for notices to all abutters, and by that I mean each and every individual private residence or condominium owner, every single one of them get a notice, and if, if the deal is just to notify the president of the condo association. There appears to be no restriction or no stipulation at all that he has to, in turn, notify everybody in the association. So that's that's something that's come up. That discussion has come up before in the Senate. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I, we need I, to do something to help protect the I, I would agree with you, but mm -hmm. having been the president of a homeowners association yeah. in California with 3,000 residents and 1,000 units, yeah. uh, it is the responsibility of that president to do that, and he's legally uh, liable to do it. how it works here. And, and you know, if, if he happens to move, that association is their responsibility to, he is their legal representative, or the management company if it says so in their bylaws. But I don't see that in the statute, the, you see the what old, I'm saying? But it's civil law, and I don't know what we, how far into that we can delve with legislation. I, that we, I think we can certainly have we can, that discussion. We can, yeah. Trim it up, and uh, you yeah. don't want to scare people because no, no. Chris scared people that you two are agreeing. Yeah, if you're agreeing with me, you're we really walk around in our committee like this all the time. Wait, with the lightning I, I didn't say we agreed on everything. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but there's a there's yeah. a measure. That, no, now, right. my my last the concern is real though. My last concern that I'm going to bother you with is this: in light of the Boston Marathon bombing, uh, concerns about safety in local communities. Talk about your first responders being your first line of protection, et cetera. We gave land to the state of New Hampshire to build I-95. I-95 charges tolls. You know and I know that there are 
vehicles, particularly large trucks, that come off I-95 because they don't want to pay the tolls and come up Route 1, and that's causing more damage to Route 1. We don't know what's in those trucks. We have no idea the contents in those trucks. We have no idea whether those trucks are adequately maintained or whether they could fall apart in the highway and cause damage. Look what we've got by the old salt and the maze and the hardware store. It's a, look at that. So something blows up. Something happens right there. What's happening to us? I would like to plead with you, and I've done this to some of you as individuals, open the confounded way stations in the state of New Hampshire and put inspectors there. <coughs> yes, you'll have to pay salaries, but you will get revenue. You're not going to tell me every truck that's on the highway in this state is, is uh, perfectly maintained. You're going to get fine revenue. Rotate the inspectors around the state up to the Canadian border, over to Vermont and Massachusetts, <coughs> all over the place, and, and start spot checking. I've lived here my, my, 50, my 49th wedding anniversary would be June 12th. <coughs> so I've lived here 49 years as of June 12th. And I don't think I've ever seen that confounded way station on Route 1 in Hampton Falls open. Rare occasion. Terrible. I, I recall very clearly that this has been one of your hot button yes, issues it has for many, me many, many years. Many years. Yes. And I agree with you 100%. And it's revenue for the state of New Hampshire, both I'm with the tolls and I'm the told fines. that the weight, has been, weight limit has been raised on 95. I've been told that. I don't know for sure. I know, I but the tolls, the tolls, get the money from the tolls and keep... Well, that keep Route 1 and some of our other routes safe. You want I agree. revenue. I agree. And we're all sitting here talking about revenue, and I make a pain in the neck of myself yelling about <coughs> revenue. Well, you got the tolls, you got the roads, you took that from us. Go, <coughs> ahead. Go ahead and... Perhaps when we have our get-together, you can join us at that and help us to craft some language and some what we want as an end result, such as... Uh, signs at uh, Seabrook and in, in, uh, in, in Hampton, exit so 1 and 2, that say no exit closed. except for local deliveries or something yeah. like that. Yeah. For trucks. The wave station right. sign in Hampton Falls says Most of the trucks closed. Are going to the yeah. street. Closed. Well, although we pay those state police, we can put them down there and have them work. Yeah, we'll see. What <laughs> I don't know. And, and on your cigarette tax, and I don't smoke, I've never smoked, but I have to say that while you may... Um, you may discourage a few people from buying cigarettes and get that extra 10 cents into the coffers, it may lower your health care costs. And, and I would put the cigarette tax a <coughs> heck of a lot higher and get people off. <coughs> and they, I know people are going to get excited. But anyhow, but think about the way stations and your highways That's and stuff. Issue. You really, really need to do something. And I'm glad you came. Senator, representatives, thank you very much. Thank you for your service to the area, to your delegation. And I just wanted to conclude with, at your next appearance, uh, Mr. Welch is preparing metrics for our cost of providing services on mm -hmm. the state of New Hampshire property. Mm -hmm. it, is, um, oh. it is a, uh, per Selectman uh, Nichols, the vice chair, a draft of our three <coughs> objectives that we've narrowed down into May. Mr. Welch would tell you that it exceeds seven figures, so we would look forward to a dialogue on that and a way forward once we have done our job. And again, thank you very much for coming in. And we are open to any suggestions you might have on how we can convince 230 communities that yeah. we need to have. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Exactly. Honestly, because I mean, I, I worked with the senator from the North Country, and he's fully yeah. on board with it. And we've just got to pick up more communities. Uh, there are 58 communities <coughs> that would have gained. If the formula had changed the way I had put it in, there were 58 communities that would have gained. Yeah. And the others We look forward to us. working with you and so. representing them. Yeah, at the, at, the, at the risk of overstaying our welcome. Um, uh, <laughs> we did um, that a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's way too much fun. Re Representative Rice alluded to a bill that has been retained. It's, uh, it's called HB 297. And what it has to do is with, is, was, is with how... Um, investment management fees are treated for trust funds and capital reserve funds. Ah. 
and what the bill would do is allow <coughs> those fees to be deducted from those reserves automatically without having to be approved by the Board of Selectmen in a town or, or a, a city council. And, and we don't have to get into it in detail here, but it would certainly, and, I, and, I, and I've been involved in, in, in this, this bill a little bit, along with Representative Rice. It would, work. It, would help, it would help me if I had a, a sense of where your head was at on this. Is it, I mean, is this something that, that you think is appropriate? Is it something that you, know, you feel that you need to still um, sign off on those fees? Um, or are you prepared to you know, let those fees get taken out of the fund automatically, which is the way it happens with you know, an investment fund and, uh, on the private sector? And most of the people who manage, <coughs> manage these funds throughout the state, uh, Mr. Mackinson went to great lengths to research all this and gather this information, and there's only a certain number, there's a finite number of firms who do this, and they all, I think virtually all, if not all, are in concurrence with what he's proposing in this. It's what is a normal uh, thing now for capital reserve funds. He wants to establish it for trust funds as well. So it's, uh, it appears to be uh, pretty solid on its face. Just some more simplification and better explaining to do to get it passed through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. There's one, two here. One, two here. Two's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Continuing with Roman numeral number four, appointments number four, Mr. Norm Silberdick. Alpha Cemetery, Cemetery <coughs> Burial Trust Fund. Yes, sir. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to uh, chat with you. Back in December, uh, there was a $20,000, approximately $20,000 um, item of a sale of a burial plot that was um, retained by the town that normally would have gone to the um, trustees of the trust fund for the cemetery cemetery trust fund and um, there hadn't been a was brought to our attention after the, after the fact and there hadn't been a uh, warrant article uh, in this last election which would have typically been sponsored by the uh, by the board of selectmen for that or uh, alternatively that could have been done by the trustees of the trust fund and the trust fund for the cemetery was set up in 87 and uh, there were three <coughs> years where an article was proposed and there was no funding. I had pr sent you a sheet of the financial analysis and the trust fund right now sits at $484,000 approximately and it's included as part of our uh, investments in our uh, common trust fund, which is uh, managed with other funds, and it's yielding about 4.3 percent currently. And we provide the town with uh, the income from the trust fund. And the trust fund has grown over the years from the sale of the burial plots. And uh, the original reason we thought that this was an incorrect act, and we checked with the Charitable trust unit who indicated to us that the selectmen had the right to do this, and it was that's not the issue. And then our thesis was that uh, our concern would be in the long term, at some point in time, there'll be a um, the, the cemetery may run out of plots and would need to acquire additional land. Mm -hmm. And so Mr. Welch and I have been in communication about this, and then he informed me that really the trust fund has been established for maintenance and not any improvements or expanding the cemetery. So um, our case is pretty well resolved as far as, as uh, what happened with the 20,000. The next question is how do we deal with this on an ongoing basis? Mr. Welch suggested that we could deal with it on a legislative matter, putting a bill in front of the, the um, state for specific legislation for um, on a continuing basis so the money can just be transferred to the trust fund with burial sales. I'm not sure given the processes of how long it takes to get a bill through and all the various conversations and committees etc. Well that's practical versus just continuing to have a warrant article for that purpose. And then it, and then it sort of comes to my mind and, and during the period of this time of uh, 
was it 26 years, there's only been uh, withdrawals, and that took place in 2008 for a, for a, a plow truck and, and to fix the roof. So the money has been minimally uh, dispersed, and the fund continues to grow. So I raised sort of a rhetorical issue. I don't know how much normal maintenance is in the current budget. I have not looked at the budget prior to, to the, of the cemetery prior to my coming here. <coughs> and then um, I would, one of, one of the thoughts that Fred had suggested to me was that we could modify this, this fund to expand its purpose by basically closing it out and reestablishing the fund through a, through a warrant article that would give it more uh, breadth as far as the things it could do from either acquiring land, using it for improvements as well as, as maintenance. But that would be, uh, if, if I'm misinterpreting what you indicate, <coughs> right, it was um, basically shut this fund down and, re and establish it again. These are issues really for discussion. We are just managers of the money. And then, sort of thinking this one step further, if, if we're going to continue to use this, have this fund, and <coughs> we're not using it for any, anything, uh, which would be the question to have, a question and answer period with the, with the trustees of the, of the cemetery, because if one of our theses was you need this for additional land acquisitions, I don't know how much more uh, plot availability there is at the current cemetery and whether uh, it's a 20-year problem from now or it's a five-year problem, whatever, I have no idea. So it may be worthwhile having a conversation and understand what is a good long-term strategy for the, for the, for the cemetery and, and its uh, future directions or whether it makes any sense to just get rid of this fund if you're not using it for any purpose and return the money to the town I mean, and do it on a pay-as-you-go basis. These are... Um, questions we're just uh, throwing open. Thank you, sir, and, and especially thank you for uh, telegraphing your, your discussion points tonight. Yeah. To the board. Thank you very much. Selectman Pierce. Yeah, I looked at this. Uh, thank you for putting this all together. It gives us a little, a better picture of what's going on. With <coughs> I found that I didn't even have any money in to speak of at all. I, I think it's uh, sort of interesting that it does give back to the town some money every year, so like the, uh, real uh, the the real estate fund, which is uh, one could argue is not that much in the grand scheme, but at least it's something. Okay, and here what we have here is something similar, and if it's going to go directly or indirectly towards maintaining the cemeteries, I really don't have a big problem with it because if we have it now, and we decide to spend all, it's all gone. So it's one of those things. It's sort of like the the uh, real estate fund. If yeah. you spend it all today on something, you don't have anything tomorrow. That's right. And that, is that a good or bad position to take? One could argue that both ways. But I really see no problem with it proceeding along the way it is uh, at all, except we need to figure out how we're going to address this one article or lack of one this year. Maybe we can put in two next year to make up. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Select and more. No comments. Um, we made a change last year where we didn't come forward with the selectman sponsored warrant article um, to move that money into the cemetery trust fund. I, I think that we should just right or wrong. I think we should decide one way or another what we're going to do before we run into the tail end of warrant articles. So if somebody else, cemetery trustees or whatever wishes to do it, they can. Selectman Woolsey. I think we need to set up a warrant article to transition this to an unexpendable fund and the proceeds of the fund would come from the sale of town land, specifically cemetery lots, and the fund should be maintained and have the revenue, the interest that accrues from it turned over on and the unreserved fund balance uh, at the end of each year to be applied as general revenue against some of the expenses of the cemetery. My best recollection is about 115, 120,000 was the annual budget of the cemetery uh, this year, Norman. But I think we need to maintain it. I think we need to maintain the Cemetery Burial Trust Fund as a permanent fund 
to generate revenue from interest on into succeeding years until, of course, all the cemetery lots are sold, that would not derive any more revenue, but the fund money would continue to sit there and generate interest <coughs> revenue indefinitely yeah. into the future <coughs> in the custody of the trustees of the trust funds. Yeah. But bear in mind that the actual, the interest from the fund is distributed now as general revenue and it's not specifically for mm -hmm. offsetting costs of the, of the right. cemetery. But if you, if the cemetery trustees come before us and say they need some money for a specific maintenance item, uh, and uh, it's approved either by the it should be in the operating budget, Norman. And then the uh, and then the revenue revenue is revenue. Then the revenue comes in uh. your fund balance and and it offsets. And that's a, that's a clearer line because you can see what they're asking for in the operating budget. I think it's a little yeah. more transparent. I, I'm a, I'm a little confused about this. I mean, I don't care one way or the other. It's just, mm -hmm. to me, it's just a matter of we're managing the money and we'll continue to give the, the income. Fred, I mean, you can probably add more color to this as far as it goes. Well, I think changing the fund to some other purpose is fraught with a few problems. Mm -hmm. First of all, it can be done. <coughs> and There would have to be a warrant article to discontinue the fund. Mm -hmm. The minute you do that, the entire amount of money goes to the general fund you're going to have to get the town to appropriate it back out to put it in a new fund. And they mm -hmm. may not do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A half a million dollars to defray taxes is a sizable amount no, of money. No, no, no question about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I propose some legislation only because I've tried to mm -hmm. keep it as narrow as possible yeah. that instead of having the funds come to the town, run through the town system, at the end of the year, <coughs> we add it all up and figure out how much was received. And the following year, we have an appropriation article for that amount of money. Well, that's an appropriation. It's not really a transfer. It's an appropriation because you've got to appropriate money. My thought was to just get the legislation. Yes, it will take a year, so you'd have to do something this coming year to deposit the money in the fund. And from then on, as the, the checks are received, they would simply be deposited with the trustees. There would be an accounting at the, uh, mm -hmm. the end with the cemetery commissioners. There'd be accounting with the trustees, mm -hmm. and at the end of the year, be reconciled. So you'd see how much was received and how much was deposited, mm -hmm. and that money would instantly start earning interest because you'd be mm -hmm. investing it as it comes in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Same. Um, same as normal. Right now, you could wait 15 to 24 months before yeah. you could get the money to invest, yeah. depending on when the town has it the right to check to give yeah. it to you, depending on what expenses mm -hmm. happen after mm -hmm. town meeting. That's a lot. I don't see a reason for that. I think you, you should have the money as quickly as possible right. to invest and make money off of. Right. And that's probably the best thing to do. Yeah. At some point in time, the town is going to need another cemetery. Yeah. I mean, look at the problems in Newcastle. Eventually, we will have that same problem. The mm -hmm. cemetery will be full. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to have to make a determination <laughs> on what piece, <laughs> what piece of land. What piece of land? It's just about <coughs> nature. That's all. <coughs> What piece of land are you going to buy? How big is it going to be? What is it going to cost? Yeah. And how are you going to raise the money? Yeah. But, 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 gentlemen, one one more follow-up. That that's for the future, and that's a decision that future town meetings have town to meetings and so will resolve. But for the, at this point in time, similar to your least land trust fund, which is a lot bigger, but we're talking about town land here. We're talking about the purchase of town land for a final resting place. And as long as the High Street Cemetery has room in it to have graves sold, I, w I personally would like to see that come in as revenue. As Fred said, go straight to the trustees, have that in the unexpendable trust fund, and forevermore derive interest, income from it to be popped in the general fund to help offset the maintenance of that cemetery. But I understand this is expendable trust. You can draw on this thing. But we, d but Town I'm meeting can. Yeah. Town I'm and talking yes. about non-expendable, which would retain the principal yep. forevermore and take the You interest. could restrict it in that fashion yes. if the town so 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 fit yeah. to do so. Because no. well, that keeps it as a living, continuing no. fund. 
it's not our responsibility is managing the money right. and getting the best return, but right. that, this was just a, an anomaly that happened, so raising the issue and if it's something that the selectmen want to We're trying to get some money for you, Norman. All right, listen, that's fine. So we're, I mean, uh, that we're, doing, we're doing quite well with, with uh, <laughs> both this trust fund and the, uh, and the real estate trust fund. So. Mr. Silberdick, thank you for your service and your, your My pleasure. input. And uh, if I may, the concluding remark, we'll declare this a dead issue tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, Roman 4. Appointments, number five, George Dovis, Ocean, Open Ocean Crest Condominiums, Alpha, request use of Kings Highway and High Street parking lot overnight five days. Gentlemen, please. <coughs> thank you. Okay. George Dovis, Jack McElhenney, yeah. we're on the board of the Ocean Crest. Basically, uh, we're a 36 unit condominium at right. 190 Kings Highway. We are <coughs> paving our lot. Our cars have to be off there for five days mm -hmm. uh, minimum. I mean, we have like seven people with handicap plates. We have many elders there. And to, for them to be scrounging <coughs> around parking on street parking will be kind of a handicap. So basically, we're asking permission to be able to park overnight on the parking lot across the way, which restricts parking to 1 o'clock. We uh, contacted the police department, but they say, you people are the ones to, to see. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Any comments? No, I was going to say, we did basically the same thing in 07 when we had it uh, seal coated and locked. and We used it only one night, but mm -hmm. we had permission then to do it. Okay. So what we're looking for is uh, to get go till over the weekend, but it's just at night anyway. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, questions, motions, please. I, go ahead, ma'am. I, I will so move to allow these gentlemen to to ha have the use of the parking spaces for the five-day period, whatever they had uh, anticipated overnight. Uh, these nice gentlemen were into the planning board. The parking mm -hmm. lot is in bad shape. Some of it's sinking, and they're going to have to redo the entire lot. It's unsafe as it is right now. People are walking out of the building or trying to back out of the parking spaces, and it's it's causing a poor condition. So it has to be done. The planning board said, fine, go ahead and do it. Second pending discussion? Uh, I will second yep. so I can discuss. discuss. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. How many parking places do you think you need? Well, right now there's 33 people they're out of the 36. Mm -hmm. uh, some have two cars, but they is, we also have garages, which once the cars are the garage, once they start ripping up the place, mm -hmm. they can't take them off. Yeah. So we're hoping most of the people only use one. Now, we have some parking on High Street, which you can take advantage of a little of it, yeah. and off, you know, the 19th Street, 18th yeah. Street, and that, but yeah. like I said, we have a lot of old people, people with handicaps, yeah. and that would be the most convenient, mm -hmm. the easiest. About how many you think you'd need, though, roughly? I'd roughly 30, I'd say 33. I don't even think 33, because some people will park on the street. Yeah. So I'll say roughly 30. Yeah. Yeah. It's a guess, right, Jack? Yeah, I would be a guess at that. And Fred, how many parking places do we have up there? Do you know off the top of your head how many parking places we have at that? Um, Where'd you fill it? Say again? Uh, I probably believe feel pretty close to filling. I don't believe that there are 30 there. There's even 33 yeah. in that parking lot that's at the yeah. corner of Kings Highway. It can probably get more. Some would have to go behind the old Kennedys. Yeah. One of the yeah. things we were going to do is most of the people, the elderly people, mm -hmm. uh, they'll leave their cars in the garage. We got a couple of people that will, yeah. you know, drive them around to shop and stuff like that. So that'll cut that number down. Mm. I, I think 30 myself is a little bit high, but yeah. You know, between High Street and, and uh, yeah, the yeah. lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, will be 30, there will not be 30 in the lot. No. Basically, like I say, there's mm -hmm. parking on High Street. Yeah. And I understand there's seven online parking spots on the other side of uh, Cinnamon Surf Shop. And so that'll take seven people. Seven rainbows, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> seven <laughs> rainbows. Yeah. Um, when whoever they are. When do you think you'll start? Question? Certainly. When do you think you'll start this on a Monday? It's starting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is a Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Um, question. Y you indicated it was only for overnight. Yeah. So, if if you go out there, you know, and obviously overnight, all we're talking about is just somebody parking in a space that would be otherwise be empty. Right. But if mm -hmm. if it's only overnight, somebody parks their car there at whatever time, you know, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whatever, mm -hmm. where do they put their car at, at, at they go to work. 7 or 8 or 9 o'clock? The majority of those cars will go to work. 
Or do there uh, errands or whatever? There's a lot of people that work in that place. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had no problem in 07 doing it. We did the same thing, but Any it was just questions? one. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank it, you. Do we have to mark the cards or anything, sir? I guess we have those tickets. Uh, the, the, we have a. We have basically we have parking. If 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 you could write a note, put it on the dashboard. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. That's, That's great. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Roman numeral number five, approval of minutes. I'll also one, move May the 13. minutes of May 13th, 2013. May I finish, please. Approval of minutes okay. number one, May 13th, 2013, and number two, May 20th, 2013. Before we start this, can we take a five minute break so I can stretch my legs so I won't pass out from the heat? Please. Yes, sir, we may. Thank you. <clears throat>
How long? I think you went on to pre med. I guess for as long as we can do it. Yeah. So yeah. I'll put it on my phone. Okay, we're already. back on, folks. <laughs> Where, where'd Mary Louise go? I think we can get through the minutes. We'll come back to her. Yeah. Uh, minutes from May 13th. I already so moved them. Good job. Yes, you have, young lady. I'll second them for discussion. Thank you. Page one. Um, one comment that applies to all the minutes, the page numbers are all um, kind of screwed up. Page one says page one of one, page two says page two of two. <laughs> page two. <laughs> now the next one's okay, so they fixed it. Page three. Page four. Um, page three. I, I get a question. I quotes Fred has given some rates on um, tipping fees mm -hmm. for solid waste, like for example in item three, um, will increase effective July 1 from 61.79 to 62.72. Yeah. And that looked funny to me. I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but then we got the rate sheet from waste management yeah. that shows like $70.55 to 72, which is more the way I remember it. Yeah, that's right, that is the rate. Right. So I would suggest that just, I'm not sure exactly what Fred said, but I would suggest that we change the minutes to reflect the reflect actual, the actual yep. figure is. I do remember, I think, Fred saying those numbers. Yeah, but I, I'm, these, correct them too. I'm sure these are, yeah. you agree that these yeah, are, those are the correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. Page four, page five, page six, page seven, Page 8. Minutes of May 20th, 2013. Page 1. So moved. Second. Page 1. Um, oh, on page 1, the um, one, two, fourth paragraph down, it has um, J. Diener's name spelled D E N I E R, and it's D I E N E R. And, and that, that continues carries, through the whole Yeah, minutes. that carries through in a half a dozen places throughout. Yeah. Page 2. Uh, Mr. Berkowitz's name is spelled incorrectly in the second paragraph under Roman 3. Page 3. Page 4. Um, <laughs> uh, one, two, three. Near the bottom of that big long third paragraph, um, Something about it says something about the raw bone of the department's needs. Basically, it should just be the the raw request for, for what the department heads want. I don't think I said <coughs> anything about bones, but then we were discussing cemeteries. So, <laughs> <laughs> page four, page five, On page five, the uh, twelve Northeast Lane and the approval um, to use town land and that whole thing. If if you look at it. Um, the fourth line from the bottom, that paragraph says to complete the work within two weeks. And I'm not sure exactly how it was communicated at the time, but they haven't started the work yet. And, and it's been two weeks since. It is <coughs> going to start. Right, but it's been two weeks already. Right. So, so maybe we want to change the minutes to, to complete the work within two weeks of commencement. Was right. that our intent? Right. Is that, and that would solve yeah. any. Right. Yeah. Make yeah. sense. Page seven. Yes, seven at the bottom. <coughs> um, at the very bottom, it says something about uh, Chuck. But the police department has no objectives. Oh, it should say objections to this proposal. Page eight. Page nine. If there's no disagreement could we please move up the gentleman that had been so patient in the back this evening under the word vote on acceptance. Vote on I'm them? sorry gentlemen and young lady uh, all those in favor unanimous thank you um, under new business 1042 Ocean Boulevard gentlemen please take your seats wow under new business okay. Good evening. Yes. Uh, my name is Steve Riker from Sandpiper Environmental Services. I'm joined tonight by the applicant and the property owner, Mark Gasek. Uh, 
uh, property is located at 1042 Ocean Boulevard. Um, <coughs> tonight we're in front of you to get permission to um, repair uh, the seawall that exists on town property adjacent to um, the property located at 1042 Ocean Boulevard. Um, as part of this project, um, the applicant is, is redeveloping the properties, demolishing uh, the house, uh, rebuilding a new house, and while doing so, would like to also um, provide a seawall revetment mm -hmm. um, while he's at it. So uh, I have prepared uh, and submitted a NHDS wetlands application, which has been approved. We've been in front of the Conservation Commission they've provided a favorable recommendation to the planning board we've been in front of the planning board and they've also approved this project so far so I think this is our last step um, details of the seawall provided in the plans as well as um, the application package that I've provided you um, there will be no need to access the beach all work could be done from the property the plan is to demolish the house and then do work on the seawall before the new house is built so all equipment all materials and everything will be stored on the applicants property um, just the seawall would be repaired um, as part of this request will this chair accept a motion to grant permission yes ma'am to mark P and Janet D Gasick the contractor and its subcontractors to enter upon town property through 1042 Ocean Boulevard in order to repair the seawall at 1042 Ocean Boulevard to restore the town property to its previous condition to complete the work within two weeks of initiation that's not in the but add that in of initiation of the work and to provide two million dollars for comprehensive general <coughs> liability five hundred thousand dollars for automobile liability and workers compensation insurance in the statutory amounts for this activity naming the town as an additional insured on certificates of insurance work not to commence until after such certificates are provided to the town I'll second for discussion thank you selectman Pierce the floor is yours um, I looked at all this and I was trying to figure out exactly what you're doing and I think I have a pretty good idea it, it takes a little bit of looking at the prints and Finding a place in my house that isn't uh, an absolute clutter <laughs> for such big drawings was a challenge. My computer room, you can't even hardly wiggle in there, let alone open a, a drawing like this. So I decided to take it in on the kitchen counter so I could look at it. But I, I think you're going to do some, what appears to be a pretty nice job. Only thing I would comment on, and this is strictly up to you folks as a builder and all that, when you put the, the what they call that brick brack, the big rocks, is that what they call brick brack? Rip wrap. Rip wrap. There we go. I always get the that's words mixed up. Make sure you give yourself a healthy dose of that. That's all I can say, and that's all I have to say about the project. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Select them more. The existing wall is the same encroachment on town property as the proposed wall? Correct. Absolutely. And there is no patio area in the new design. It's simply just the collection of boulders as the existing wall is. Yes. How many feet of town land are impacted here or as far as the existing encroachment is concerned? Uh, well, the lot's 50 feet wide. I believe the yeah, entire Yeah, it's land. all. It's 50 feet by how many feet out into town oh. property at the end of your line? Um, how many feet out from the property line? I just want to make mm -hmm. sure I got. <coughs> from the property line seaward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the wall is eh, it's slightly irregular in shape but about 20 feet 20 feet and that's the existing condition as the well existing mm -hmm. yes and that in your new wall will line up with the walls of the abutters correct yep okay and I think something I read dreamt was that uh, perhaps uh, that uh, <coughs> you were considering um, coming forth to the board with a proposal as to how we can financially um, increase revenues from the use of town land because this came up this came up after the Mother's Day storm multiple years yeah. ago when many of these sea walls uh, not necessarily here but mm -hmm. on the north part of the proper of uh, north part of Hampton and were being rebuilt as a result of storm damage all of them I think encroach upon town land uh, because of the way the deeds were written um, yes. 
you are going to consider something that the board can consider at a future date as to what we might want to do as far as uh, revenues from those it, that it usage? It went over to the hands of legal today to, to examine it because there is a provision in the statutes with regards to the lease of rental of town land. Mm -hmm. Right. I won't cause, I won't use that as an exception. <coughs> as any mm -hmm. criticism of this project, I'll certainly be voting in favor, but uh, we do have to. It's, I knew it was a hot issue six years ago. So uh, well, we thought we were first in line to get the five, some of the five million dollars. Uh, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions, Mr. Chair. Sure. Thank you, sir. Question, well, yes. and selectman was yours. I'm fine. It's just to clarify for the public because Fred and I discussed <coughs> this briefly today. My concept of the seawall is the seawall that is south of uh, High Street, joining 1A, and this is a rip-rap or large rock revetment. It's a revetment. Right. And, and so we're, and Fred's working on something so we'll clarify the language, but this is a different type of seawall called a revetment with the very large rocks nice that hopefully rock. won't go anywhere. That's what I suggest. All those in they, favor? That they really Unanimous. Have Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Your hat, Going back to there? Roman 6, town manager's okay. report. Mr. Welch, please. Mr. Chairman, uh, we all heard this evening uh, our state representatives and senator. Um, House yes. bills 138 and 139, which were described here this evening, uh, have been passed by both houses of the legislature. Mm -hmm. Those bills are on their way over to the governor for signature. And uh, hopefully it will give us a little relief in the preparation of warrants and the protection for... Uh, bonding by the solid waste district. Mm -hmm. The United States Department of the Interior <coughs> has forwarded the signed amendment to the deed for the 20-foot right-of-way of the two lots at the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, this deals with a walk restaurant down to um, uh, the condo project. <coughs> um, uh, those have been recorded. Uh, we're awaiting releases uh, for the proposed deeds in order for the deeds to be written and uh, the, the town's interest in the right of way to be voted away by the board. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's in progress now. Um, the courthouse building has been removed. I think as everybody has seen, it came down last Tuesday. The lot has been cleared in accordance with the vote of the town and in accordance with the contract documents. Very nice job, Fred. They did a good job. Very nice uh, I'm job. surprised that it, in two days they had it completely cleared out. So uh, it was good, it was clean, and they protected the playground, mm, which very was a nice. ma major importance to us. Uh, Senate Finance has approved the funding of the outstanding SAG grants from 2014. We'll see what happens in the House. Further action is required there, and probably the Committee on Conference for the $4 million by 22 022. Uh, hopefully that will be coming our way in the budget, not all of it, but uh, <laughs> us, our portion of it uh, for the, the coming year. Yeah. As general information, the board has received a copy of the insurance, our insurance carrier's inspection <coughs> recommendations for the right. playground of the kids' kingdom. I was also notified today by the police department, we're about to go through the annual firearms training again. Yeah. Good. And starting June 8th and 9th, which is a Saturday and Sunday, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then Friday and Saturday, the 14th and 15th in June, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah. Saturday, the 22nd of June, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. How about so the night training? Not yet. That, that comes after, probably July. Okay. Um, please uh, make sure you have your earplugs available, just in case. <coughs> <laughs> These weapons tend to make a little bit of noise. So that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Roman uh, 7. Oh, 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 okay, here we go. Selectman Pierce. Yes, I have a question about uh, the solid waste district. Can, when can we get out of that? Uh, that's strictly up to this board. I know the, the Director of Public Works has told me that he is preparing a report for you, mm -hmm. uh, which will look at future potential mm -hmm. uh, for our cost for solid waste and whether or not uh, he's going to make a recommendation to you to consider getting out of it. Mm -hmm. You have the authority to do it, which town meeting voted, uh, but we want to make sure that you have the financial information that he's yeah. putting together to be sure that it's the right thing to do. I thought there was some snag with the, uh, the um, uh, solid waste district itself approving us, letting us get out. By statute, the district yeah. committee yeah. Both Keith and I sit on that committee as voting members. Uh, has to vote to allow us to withdraw. Yeah. There is no bonded debt in the district, uh, which is one of the reasons why it's 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 appropriate to consider yeah. it at this time. 
Uh, they are, however, considering expanding the use of the district mm -hmm. as we go out to these new contracts after 2015, and that could put a, uh, a cost on the town of Hampton. So it'd be disregarding our best interest in relation to dollars in that issue. Yes. We still have to get their approval to get out. That is correct. If uh, there is a provision in the statute that says that if the district votes bonding, mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons why we wanted this statute amended, if they vote bonding, uh, we have to go through the SB2 procedure to get a special town meeting through the budget committee and the mm -hmm. entire process in order to get the town meeting to vote on that. Mm -hmm. If the town votes against it, mm -hmm. the bond cannot be raised. Good. If they go for a second try at the same bond and the town votes against it, we're automatically removed from the district. Good. No. There's a protection. So. Good. <laughs> We've got a little opening there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Selectman Moore. No questions. Vice Chairman Nichols. Yeah, a couple. Fred, um, you made a comment that the contractor of uh, 12 North Lane, which is the one that's going to rectify the problems for beach access yes. in Browns Beach, is starting this week. I suspect you know that that beach access is still a problem for yeah. mm -hmm. somebody that's not particularly agile. So, I guess, do we anticipate then that that is going to be corrected by the end of this week, or? Well, my, in my information is he's starting this week. I just don't know what day. He said he would correct it immediately when he started. Okay. So either way, it sounds like worst case where we've only approved two weeks, then the worst case of that being corrected that would be um, mm. Friday a week. Yes. Because he's on. Okay. okay. And that would be the 14th of the latest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one issue I had highlighted and I sent pictures was the um, Sun Valley Beach raking. Yes. Seabrook looks very, very nice, and a week ago, Hampton um, looked like a home that nobody lived there. I stopped down there this evening on my way um, here, and it appears to me that the state must have raked it unless you got Seabrook to help out, because <coughs> while the Hampton portion doesn't look as nice as Seabrook, it looks pretty good and considerably better than it did a week ago. We had some shotgun testing with the, uh, with the vendor and uh, had a chat with him okay. and he said he would get it done this week. So are are you still considering done. working with Seabrook? We have requested it. The selectmen have not met yet to, con to, uh, to consider it, but we have requested that and, and we've requested the terms and conditions under which they would do it, which we bring back to this okay. board for your mm -hmm. consideration. Yeah, because again, Seabrook 1 looks really, really nice. Yeah. Our portion is a very small portion. They're already there. They wouldn't have to deploy equipment like the right. state. But anyway, it's about 12 house fronts. Excellent. My, exactly. My, my main reason for bringing it up is it does look better. Mm -hmm. So we made um, progress. Um, trash pickup today. Um, as you guys know, we started <coughs> a three week um, test. test period on Memorial Day, and I got two phone calls. Um, literally at like five quarter after five today, um, one individual from 12th Street, one from uh, Kings Highway about four oh, blocks oh, down, oh, saying they weren't picked up today, but they were picked up. Their day essentially shifted from Friday to Monday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They weren't picked up today, but they were picked up on the first Monday, which would have been Memorial Day. And both of them were actually um, very nice, and it was more provided as informational type of mm. thing than, than complaining. But then what I also noticed um, is when I was coming back from Sun Valley, okay, what I saw was in Sun Valley, I saw it in the Island District, and I saw it um, in the area of Boar's Head around Rick's Place, is that there were just recycling barrels out. <coughs> caused me to wonder, maybe we picked up the trash in those locations, but not the recycling. I don't know. So anyway, we'll that's, ask. that's an FYI or whatever. Um, final thing is, and I requested this by email three or four days ago, is if you could outline what the plan is for, <coughs> for Monday, Friday pickup at the beach starting, what, I believe June 17th? In other words, like, what, what streets are we picking up? Are we, in fact, starting on June 17th? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily expect you to know all the streets off the top of your head I if you prepare them. for it, but I think yeah. somehow so we, we've got to get the information yeah. um, out there to people what streets we're, we're picking up the additional day now. My suggestion is that Keith be here next Monday night to tell you. Next Monday is the 10th. The 10th. I mean, I, I think it's worthwhile putting it on the website. Um, 
you know, ahead of that. Um, I mean, this this is, you know, this is one of those issues why I've been pushing for this broadcast email mm -hmm. reverse 9-11. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. I understand that it's not in place today, but um, this, you know, one of the comments in Keith's flyer was that we're going to pick up res something to the effect of residential properties that are rented. Th there's no way that, that, that the the guys in the trucks can know what those properties are. You don't, uh, I mean, so right. this, uh, I mean, what we do over the next week in communication can be the difference between this being a, a just a very smooth mm -hmm. um, transition or, or you know, uh, chaos or whatever. Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment? Yes, sir. Please just excuse me for interrupting That's all right. uh, uh, quickly. Uh, I got calls today, and the calls basically said this person didn't get a flyer, and according to the flyer that he read on his neighbors, he should have got one, and his neighbor got one, and he shouldn't have got one. The, the flyer is about what's going to happen, whatever that means, okay? I haven't seen one. I didn't so get one. I didn't <laughs> get one either. <laughs> and then also, he said his recycling wasn't picked up at all. And he called, and Public Works, and that was around 3 and they said, they haven't finished yet. And this was about four or five when he called me. So mm -hmm. I don't know what happened with recycling down his area. <coughs> I can't tell you. I don't know. Okay, so um, one final <laughs> item is that Thank the you. parking signage um, on the lots in the area of Ocean Boulevard and High Street and all that, that once it's in will give residents more access to parking are still not in. No, they haven't been delivered yet. Well, that was initially... We, we approved that last fall. It was initially supposed to be done by May 1st, then by Memorial Day. We're, we're now, well, you know the date. Yeah, I do know the date. That's it. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Um, for the party that was dumping trash this morning when I was at the transfer station. Yes. Get charged. I have called Public Works. I haven't heard back from okay, them. Okay, but we uh, have. But I did call Public Works. They're and alerted. They asked the question. Okay. Um, State Fair this past weekend. Any, any kickback on this us? This coming any? weekend. This coming. Oh, it's this weekend. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was now. thinking the first the weekend sixth, in June. Eight, I'll ask weekend. that question next sixth, week. Seventh, yeah. Would you be kind enough to add to your warrant article list possibly the no a no through trucking so we can talk about that? Yeah. Because I can tell you the places where it's still posted, which I will do at a later date. Thank you. Are you finished, That's Mrs. It. Woolsey? That's it. Thank you. Old Business, Roman 7, Dread, Town of Hampton, Joint Operations Plan. Mr. Welch, please. Sir, uh, we met with uh, Dread um, <coughs> about a week ago. They have sent back a draft, uh, which has gone to all of the department heads. Just about to drive me crazy the number of pieces of paper that are circulating, but it's okay. We kept we've, we've tried to keep it in, in in concert with everything else. So uh, we're going to get copies. Or? Yes, I received the last of um, the responses today, and uh, there are two changes that the Public Works Department has asked to be made. Uh, I am going to uh, tomorrow morning talk to. Um, Bill Bryce at, uh, at Dread, and uh, they, these are non-controversial changes in my opinion. I will have them made, and then we will circulate this to the department. All the departments are signed off, so um, hopefully on the 10th, if everybody's happy, you can vote what you want to vote. Um, are we not going to get to see the draft prior to that? Um, I'm not going to sit here and vote on something that I haven't read. Well, you'll have it by tomorrow. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. As soon as I get the change made, okay. get the approval, you'll have it out Appreciate. here tomorrow. So. Wonderful. Um, Selectman Pierce, in your absence, the uh, joint <laughs> operations <laughs> plan with two minor changes from the Department of Public Works will be transmitted to you tomorrow for your review, and we'll put that on the agenda for the 10th. Is that correct? That's correct. Sir. Thank you. Continue. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. And does anybody have any questions on the joint operating plan? They haven't seen it yet. They can't possibly have. Questions. They may have questions for you, like <laughs> I, I might questions. ask you about the changes to public works, but I shall not at this hour. Number two, overtime issues. Vice Chairman Nichols, you had some meetings and wanted to know if you wanted to share of any of your findings or information. Uh, 
I really have nothing to comment in that area. The only thing that I would comment that's related is um, we did receive an email from the town manager um, essentially stating that he does not intend to change the transfer station hours either in 2013 or 2014, um, which I thought was positive and I think um, overtime um, can be removed as an ongoing item hmm. in old business and I think that um, the, the sum of, of all of the discussions is the only thing that I would like to see addressed is, is, is trying to reorganize the distribution of hours in the transfer station in the 2014 budget hmm. um, to try and cut down from the $80,000 level in overtime maybe via part time or whatever. So those are my comments on overtime. Wonderful, and thank you for your work on that and driving that. Does anybody on the board have any questions for Selectman no. Nichols on that? Thank you. Selectman's goals and objectives. Does anybody have any comments? I can or comment on, on that. Yes, I, I, we basically agreed yeah. on three objectives last week. I sent an email out to everybody which has those three objectives. I think in terms of finalizing this, the only request that I would make is. is Phil, the, the state of New Hampshire one simply states inequity, inequities with the state of New Hampshire. Maybe between now and the next meeting you could articulate something that's a couple of sentences that shoot that to me. I'll put them into all, yeah. um, all into one word document and forward that to Christina and then we can consider the setting. Yeah. Does that make sense, sir? Um, while we're on that, um, excuse me for interrupting. Um, the EPW director is coming in on the 17th? Which day is he coming in? We'll have him come in next week. Next Monday. The okay. Oh, the 10th. Okay. And, and go over the change in beach pickup uh -huh. in detail. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. That's wonderful. So that everybody, everybody who watches or sees, sees the rerun will understand what's going on. I appreciate that. And will he be able to... Um, um, comment on <coughs> any of these issues with the transfer station over time and I, I, I think more that people. can be deferred to the 2014 budget discussion. Ooh, you want to We're defer it to then? No. Nope. Okay, nope. Can he, okay he, he won't comment on that next week then. No, I suspect not. No, he has to have the budget back to us yeah. by the end of June. Okay. So he's, I know he's diligently working on that issue. Okay. So Thank you, Fred. That's I, all I have. I, I want to barge in here though. Yes, ma'am. Because what I want to ask for is a meeting hopefully before or by the end of June um, whether it's a Monday night when we totally clear the schedule or another evening I think we need to sit down with Keith and uh, and Fred and review what's happening in public works um, that that department is still too way overburdened with with trash collection way overburdened with what they have to do and I think we need to sit down now not even looking toward 2014 and understanding where we're going and I'm talking about packers number of packers reconfiguring what we're doing with the whole waste situation right now public works is devoting probably 40 percent of its time to this waste collection business we can't afford to keep doing that private roads collection on private roads I, there's, there's a myriad of things that need to be addressed and I'm going to ask if the board will consent to devote one whole evening to Keith and the Public Works Department to try to get us moving on the right direction. It's, it's, we need we've got a lot more work to do there. May I add a little bit of a comment to that? I think somebody told me today they haven't, they're not, are they using all those automatic No, packers? Not. I told you that. Say that again? All but one. Why is that? I think that's the backup unit. <coughs> we, we need to discuss this in depth. And I had some discussion with Keith last Friday, but we, we've got a lot of... How many, how many automates we have? Three? Three. Mm -hmm. And if you use one for backup, we're down to two? Mm -hmm. They're so using two. So we've we never got used a, a, three. A hundred and sixty some or seventy some thousand dollar people equipment just mm -hmm. equipment just sitting there resting away? Uh, actually, it was substantially more than that. Well, how much did they end up costing? I believe the sidearm, double arm packers were closer to 200 and mm -hmm. Oh, and the dust saddles? Okay. The rear loaders are like 120. <coughs> we need to talk about that. Let's, yes. I, I agree with I'd that. I'd like talking. to spend a whole evening on nothing but public works. I don't like seeing that sitting around like that. Thank Thanks. you. 
I, I have a suggestion. Um, I'm not sure exactly what we would have planned to discuss in a whole meeting, and I'm not expressing opposition mm -hmm. to it, but if Keith is going to be in anyway mm -hmm. uh, next Monday on June 10th, mm -hmm. then at that time we would have a discussion with Keith as to what we might discuss at that proposed. Um, full a pre-meeting meeting? meeting? Uh, yeah, 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 pre-meeting. Yeah. I haven't heard that let's, in 25 yeah. years. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, let's just plan on if the chairs, if the chair allows and the, and the agenda allows that we devote most of the meeting when Keith is due here on the 17th anyway. We'll have to keep the Seven. agenda cleaned um, down. I mean, it's well, we're saying issue. he's here on the 10th. He's no, here on the 10th seven. only to address the issue that one of us has already raised that he has to, you know, well, the beach collection right. issues. Yeah. So that's okay. the only reason he's coming in next oh, week. Okay, so we can talk to him on the 17th as yeah. well. Okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. Regular week oh, and perhaps we can, we can manage the agenda so that we're out of yeah. here okay. before Okay. Okay. Good night. Yeah, sounds good to me. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Continuing on, Romans 7 Old Business number 4, 2014 Warrant Articles. Mm -hmm. Mr. Welch. Please. Chairman, oh. I have sent you <laughs> a, a small <laughs> compendium of warrant articles for the, the coming year. Uh, obviously, we are not done with those as of yet. Uh, you and I still have to get together, Fred, on the I've waste ordinance. I've got a ton of stuff I've got to get together with on warrant articles. I know. Um, we have the articles for the uh, election of offices, for the budget, for the police forfeiture fund, mm -hmm. for the sewer and drain building, which has been submitted by Public Works, for human service agencies, uh, <coughs> for lease and rent of town property for seawalls and revestments. Um, we need to uh, in invoke the five-year clause that's in the statute in order mm -hmm. to do that. Fred's going to parenthesize um, revetments and say large rock. <laughs> okay. Large we uh, yeah. we uh, we also have uh, two acceptance articles for streets, uh, repeal of the fire department capital reserve fund, repeal of the administrative enforcement ordinance, repeal of the petty cab and the taxi ordinances. We d uh, oh right. Well, you but you said that you thought that that wouldn't be. I mean, Fred and I discussed that. that just. Being at less risk if we just get rid of the taxi cab and pedicab ordinances. Why do we gain out of having to start with? Because then we have nothing, n there's nothing anybody can pin on us if something goes wrong. If people are operating taxis and they, they're under no obligation to the town. I'm, I'm a little confused. Why? Well, we don't, this isn't the time to okay, we'll fight through it. But okay, let's go ahead. We'll talk right. about later. Yeah. Uh, we've been trying to work on, on, on uh, these different items. Um, I'm back on roads again, which I am at this time of the year anyhow. I have finished reading all the selectmen's minutes since 1967. Oh, God, love us. Uh, <laughs> reviewing them all and, and pulling out items that we found that are inconsistent and need to, need to go back. I believe that at your next meeting we'll have a public hearing on accepting four or five streets that were improperly accepted previously uh, because no public hearing was called. So we're just trying to remove a defect in the hearing notice. Um, we're trying to get through those, and we're trying to get through ones that we've discovered were never accepted by the town, but we're maintaining. Mm. Uh, we also have a group of streets that was never accepted by the town, and the owner of the property had, has a letter on record saying he will never allow them to be accepted by the town, but we're <laughs> maintaining them. Yeah. Uh, so we're trying to get through this process of, of documenting all the roads in town, and we're, we're making headway finally. Uh, and getting most of this done. So uh, those, those issues will be coming up as warrant articles as well because they need to be resolved. Um, that's about it. So about the 79E tax exemption. Exemption. Yes, that, that is mine, and uh, okay. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that exercise last year on the uh, sea spray and uh, just for a frost call uh, to the board. Um, I'll make a motion next week. Um, to repeal that's um, that use in this town, and I just wanted to put that out there. To and um, do what? To repeal 79E. Make a motion to put a word article forward. To, to rescind it. Right. Yeah, and I'll make that motion next week. And I just wanted to give everyone time to to research that and okay. uh, give give advance wording on that. Um, 
any other old business. Before we try, John, Mr. Chairman, are you, are you prepared next week to discuss why you why I want to push this off of the? Uh, it's going to be a simple motion, and if you support 7090, I think you would vote against my you motion. Have, well, and I mean, if you I don't agree. support it, then you would. I have no problem. <laughs> Are you, I don't gonna, think are you going to give a discussion as to your motivation for such action? Well, uh, next week when the motion's made, if there's discussion, we'll, okay. we'll deal with it then. I'm fine yeah. with that. Okay. okay. That's um, any other old business? Yeah, I've got uh, two things. Um, I was down at Boar's Head. Selectman Nichols has brought it up. I know that uh, Public Works and the town manager are giving it uh, keen uh, attention. But it's the uh, access to the beach down at Place Cove. Yeah. And, and that's... That is very dangerous. That's dangerous for, for young children being carried by their parents. Oh, yeah. It's dangerous <coughs> for old men like me. And thank you, thank you for bringing that. It, and uh, <laughs> that we long-legged old men. What about the short guys? It's even more dangerous for them. Uh, we we really need to uh, get up. And there were two uh, lovely young ladies, Ruth Ann and Dottie, that are down there. There's a strong tax base in that neighborhood. They don't contribute much for service needs, and, mm -hmm. and they are adamant yeah. about it. And they're right, and that that is really um, something that needs immediate attention. There, there are quite a few um, people, um, elderly, I've, that literally they sit on the benches and don't go down on the beach because of that access. And yeah. it's been like that yeah. since January or February. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. And then uh, I would uh, motion that we meet uh, every Monday uh, for the rest of the year at 10 a.m. in the morning as our good brothers and sisters do at Seabrook in Newcastle and stop this uh, night owl stuff. I think it's unfair to our full-time employees. I think it's unfair to um, the denizens in town that come here and uh, have to burn the midnight oil. My motion is that we uh, cease meeting at uh, 1900 and meet at 10 a.m. every Monday morning. I'm second. second. Thank you, sir. Discussion? Are you talking about having a regular selectman's meeting in the morning? That's the motion. Oh. And you second it? Yes. I'll stop the discussion. I think that that is interesting. A proposition except for the fact that if you are trying to get the town's people and the public to view the meetings and participate most people in town other than those who have nothing else to do like some of us retired people they're not going to be able to watch a 10 a meeting live and chances are they won't be able to make it here to a live meeting so I would be uh, I think that I would want to maintain having the meeting at 7 o'clock in the evening as it's always been done in the past. Thank, Thank you. you. Selectman Nichols. Uh, comments? I would not be in favor of 10 a.m., but would not have a problem with sliding it forward to something a bit earlier than 7 p.m. Do you care to amend the motion? Um, no, I'm just throwing my comments out there, and let's kind of go around. Thank you. Selectman Woolsey? No. Uh, yeah, and what you can do on that, my final comment before I ask for a vote, is uh, uh, you can have the meeting and people can still turn on at 1900 and watch it just like it was a replay. And all those in favor? All those opposed? Three to two, the motion is defeated. Roman numeral number eight, new business duties and prerogatives of the chairman and members of the board as individuals. Selectman Woolsey. Yes, I ask that this be put on as a result of uh, activity that took place uh, earlier this month, um, May 21st specifically. Um, I happen to respond, let's see, to an email from outside council uh, regarding the 339-345 um, situation with the zoning board and the uh, attorney was looking for a time and place for us to meet with council and I responded uh, to her saying that I was definitely available. Um, when I did that, I also um, found that my response and, and their request was piggybacked on a, an email from the chairman, from Chairman Bean. And 
uh, Chairman Bean's message to uh, outside counsel uh, went as follows. Uh, just before you, a point of order, are, are we going to go down this slope? Yes, of, we are. Of, yes, of we are. Divulging yes, we are. This is nothing client. confidential in this email. Yep. Oh, as, as long as we're doing that, because this, 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 there's, there's, uh, in, in my, and I don't, I've, I've discussed this with counsel tonight. This email string, and I'm happy to talk about it, uh, is quite extensive and goes to both internal counsel, goes to external counsel, and if you want to go down that slope, no, I'm not um, then, the entire you know, oh, well, it's part of that, and it goes along with I'm it, because it is, it is a dialogue, well, you, um, I'm let me tell you now, I will bring it up, because you have opened the box. So if you're going to bring it up uh, I'm selectively. I'm speaking about Thank your you. request to outside with the town counsel attorney. beyond having noticed this board that you were asking. outside counsel for this activity. I was not notified. I just wanted to make clear when I respond to you and read your emails uh, that I just wanted to make sure. My emails to this I, I did this whole string right here, both to outside counsel and the attorney, Mark Jarrell. I mean, this is, a, this is a very slippery slope you're going down. Well, there, I don't. There is so please go ahead, because I, I have it oh, right here. Go ahead. Can I comment? I, I think that if we are going to publicly discuss emails that are client attorney privilege that it would be appropriate to have a motion that the board agreed to do that in public prior to the discussion. The board does have the authority um, to make those public. I'm happy to go through the whole because these are all interrelated emails. There's, there's uh, specifically there's uh, an email from um, Selectman Wolsey to Attorney Gerald on this issue, who's not even representing the Selectman Board in giving courses of action that he, she's wishing to pursue. And that, that to me, opens up Pandora's box for what is legal. I'm, I'm specifically referring to your 522 email to Attorney, Attorney Gerald that Attorney does not re represent this board. Attorney this Gerald matter. is town council. Not on this issue, he's not. Matt Upton is in your... No, 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 no. Attorney... Gerald. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Well, let's put it this way. I don't think the discussion is on about what's in the emails. I think the fact that there was an activity performed or request made from an a f to a firm that didn't have this board's approval. I don't correct. think we have to get you're, into you're the correct. detail. And the board did not approve the activity and the activity, if it had been carried out, would have resulted in billable hours. That's also And my true. contention is that no member of this board on his or her own can I, can has I, the right can to... Can I suggest that yes. we pause for a minute or two until we've got a full board back? Well, here. that may mean that we're pausing till 2 a.m., Richard, and quite frankly, I think I asked for this on the agenda, and I'm not in the habit... But that's that, that's fine. I'm not yeah. objecting that, Mary. I'm just suggesting... I'm not in the wait. habit of leaving the room when there's an ongoing meeting. Should we take um, a pause until we can get everybody back together? Well, I don't know when that might be, but I, if to clarify, I, after I discovered what had been asked mm -hmm. of outside counsel, mm -hmm. which had not been cleared through me. Or cleared through anybody else. Or cleared through anybody else. That we're aware of. Right. Then uh, I consulted Attorney Gerald and asked him if he would be kind enough to counsel mm -hmm. the member of the board, specifically Chairman Bean, as to his responsibilities in asking for something, A, that was not sanctioned by the board, and B, mm -hmm. that would have resulted in billable hours to the town. So the, the consequence of this action would have caused bills to be produced. So that's my story. We really need to communicate Any further discussion, with each other Selectman Pierce, as a board. The floor is yours. So I guess what do you want us to do about this situation? Well, first of all, I think it should be understood, although I would expect it would be understood, 
that in a matter relating to official board business mm -hmm. that we all be informed. I agree with that. And that each and every member of this board understand that he or she cannot take upon themselves something like this without the sanction of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, I, as a result of what took place uh, on May 21st, I'm prepared to move that we require Mr. Bean to step down and relinquish the chair to be replaced by the vice chair. That's and, I'll, and I'll second that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? I, I, I would like to comment. Please. I think, I think any time you remove somebody as chair, you, you have to be um, very cautious. I, I think there's a, a, a situation where um, it, it's just something that should be avoided at all costs. Um, having said that, I, I have to comment um, not just on this situation which was described here, but I have a sense that, that the board is not being informed um, mm -hmm. by the chairman of, of his activities and what's going on. I've had a number of situations, probably three, where residents have informed me of um, meetings that you're having with staff and whatever, which in itself is not a problem, but the board has not been um, informed. And I just, um, I just have a concern. I think that if Chairman Bean were to acknowledge some of those concerns and be willing to take steps to keep us better informed, um, then that would satisfy me and I would appreciate hearing his comments relative to this motion. Sure. I will add a couple of comments. Sure. Let me, let me. I'll, while you're sorting through your papers, Please let my, me my concern is this. Today, <coughs> June 3rd, 2003, we had a meeting at 6 o'clock, and I busted my ass, literally, and screwed up my whole life and my wife's and my son's so I could be here for a meeting that I thought was important. And damn it, excuse my language, if I can do it, there's no excuse for other people to come to meetings when it's convenient, for when we need to have one done. Like for Ed Tinker, he needs one on a couple of issues and so forth. And all this only Monday stuff just doesn't cut it with me. That is totally unacceptable. If you can't work any other day of the week, then you shouldn't have ran for the office. And that's how I feel. And I have, I have some personal problems, I know that. But I, w I can work around mine, but it looks like some other people can't. Th thank you very much. Any, any further comments, Lieutenant Pierce? I'm all set. Thank you. I'm looking uh, at the town worksheet, and uh, I can talk about meeting with Mr. Silberdick uh, on several occasions. I can talk about uh, uh, the Public Utilities Commissions, but I I'm not here to say that I, I work any harder than any of you do here. But I am looking at the old and new business before the Board of Selectmen. Um, the revolving fund, Article 16, 17, and 18. That was Mary Louise's uh, the town attorney um, using him. The Channel 22 box van, the encumbrances, we brought those forward. <coughs> this, this list right here was driven by me from your report because as the chair, you serve your board members. It's an added responsibility. So that's done. And if, if you have this here, you should have it tonight. That's, that's something that I will accept responsibility for producing. Legal and BOS, uh, the Keefe Avenue development, 56213, completed. Those issues under legal and finance, completed. The agreement of document review, the planning board, issuance of building permits and private road, SAU request for cable channel funding, your meeting tomorrow. Um, finance, analysis of the 2012 overtime to 2011 overtime. I again had that on the agenda this evening for Selectman Nichols to share. I think that's sharing with the board. I don't think there's any exclusivity or any 
privatization of that information. LGC, return of health insurance premiums, have actually been up to the LGC um, and discussed that matter with them. Taking the time to do that just like you folks do. DPW, commercial trash casino, and Ashworth rubber exemption. Interest of the board on the paper, again, completed. Residential pickup, 56213, completed. Sidewalk issues to be determined still in legal review. Winter maintenance plan to be determined in legal review. Solid waste in-house evaluation study to be determined six months out, commercial pickup. This is the second uh, document that is in my packet as I prepare every week, and it's produced by Christina. Town manager, corrective action plan, purchasing policy, completed. Bread, J-O-P. We're, we'll be doing that next week. We've been driving that. Last year, that was signed in February by the state. I think this is June 3rd. We're talking about signing it on the 10th with minor revisions from DPW. Otherwise, that document would have been available tonight. Moving on, and just uh, don't tell me to stop because you asked the question, department assessing, update of assessing that da database, 520 completed. Special permit information on assessing cards, completed. Police, update of noise ordinance. Entertainment license requirements, July 2013. That's on the public input session. Board of Selectmen, 2013 selectmen's goals and objective. Communication with the public, Richard, that's yours, 513, completed. One, mass email distribution. Two, non-emergency reverse 9-11, completed. 2014 Warren articles, driving those again, moving those up. Tonight, it's 6-3. Sewer discharge fee, 79E, a heads up a frost call that I'll be making a motion next week for that. Direction of the 2014 budget and CIP to town manager, 520-2013, completed. Code of Ordinances Update Plan, 513, 2013, completed. Mayberry Report, Selectman Wills, do you like that? I do too. To be determined. Needs Planning Board action. One, Impact Fee Ordinance, Update Transfer, 5,000 to Planning Board. RSA 4114, Release of Federal Easements to Town, 520, completed. State Legislation, they were in tonight. Invite Send 52, they're meeting 63. Purchasing Policy and Procedures Amended. Completed, 5-6-2013. Solid waste ordinance changes to be determined. I mean, I think we're mowing it down. Um, there's a, there's a, a motion on the floor. All those in favor? No, I have, I have a quick comment to make. This is the been there, done that thing. I, as chairman of the Municipal Budget Committee, would warn the committee members each year that a chairman serves at the pleasure of the board or the committee, as the case may be. Uh, in, what, ten years ago, eight years ago, I went to the Board of Selectmen and demanded that they allow department heads to testify before the Budget Committee as RSA 3216 requires, and that board was being stubborn. Uh, Fred came in on the tail end of that as manager. And my committee was not happy with me, and they voted me out as chair. And I stood up and took a place at the table, and Mr. Buck took the place of in the, his place in the chair, and that was the end of it. We have, by my calculation, because I have done this before, six months to get all the ducks in a row and get ready for next year. Mm -hmm. We have to have warrant articles in place. We have to have the budget in place. We have not finished Fred's review. It's taken us three months, more than three months, to fool around with this joint operation plan. There's plenty of other work to be done and scheduled, and I am not seeing the work moving, and I'm not seeing the communication with this board. And as one member, as one member of this board, and I do not do this lightly, but that... That are you quite done, Selectman Mosley? Well, you're ready to have a vote. I know you want to hear yourself talk, but are you uh, ready for the vote? I have one comment before we take the vote. You mentioned all these tasks that you ac accomplished on your list there of mm. accomplishments. I don't recall this board ever saying anything about or giving permission to or granting permission to go talk to the LGC, for example. That's a big... Are you, that's a are, big are you that's done talking, listening to yourself talk? Yes, yes I am. Okay, I, there's a motion on the talk, floor talk to replace the three. chair and, okay. and, and put in vice... I'm voting all those in favor? favor? The motion. All those in favor? Four? Select one more. 
Okay, four in favor. The motion carries. Selectman Nichols, you're the chair. I hear. You have your oops, notes there. Okay. Next item, new business. High Street and Route 1 intersection tra traffic engineer's report. Fred? Shove over, Dick. Uh, that was, uh, uh, pardon me, uh, there's going to be a vice chair. You can't hold two positions. Uh, no, I'm we running the meeting as the vice chair. Yeah, well, we I'm, 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 we I am now making a motion to have Mike Pierce as the vice chair. Okay. Um, May I interject? The, the purpose of having the vice chairman is to serve as a backup, which is what Richard is doing. There should be no need for any other until we get to next year's, or unless Richard does something really bad and I make another motion. That having Mr. Nichols uh, now exceed to the chair should suffice. I, I, I think we should get through tonight's meeting yes. with me running it as the vice chair. <coughs> leave it at that tonight and let Thank things you. cool off. I agree with that. Let's leave it alone uh, until on, we get On the high street intersection? Yes, to Fred. Well. I sent to the board a yep. copy of the information that the yes, chief of police gave yep. to me. Uh, which was the original report uh, from our consultant on this matter mm -hmm. um, and his memorandums and recommendations uh, make the note that it cost two hundred and fifty dollars for that grand piece of <laughs> may, may, may I make paper. an observation on that for, because I've been the person mostly complaining on this stuff <laughs> I, I'm not up and down Route 1 as frequently as I used to be however I do go up and down Route 1 and I still maintain to all of you that. The problem is this. When you're southbound at the at, at LeMay's and the hardware store, mm -hmm. the sign is <coughs> confusing because people going southbound are accustomed Excuse to Excuse me, Mr. Being Chair, I'm going to watch the rest of the game. Thank tonight. you. That is that is such a treat. Thank you. Um, when you're southbound, you expect to be able to turn east as the northbound lane on Route 1 is turning west onto Exeter Road. And having that sign there basically to wait, people ignore it. And the southbound turn is not the problem. The problem at that intersection is northbound and before the light, e before the light changes or in the absence of a green light, Everybody piles into that intersection. You have two or three cars in that intersection, and they're not going to get out of it until you get a red light for your southbound traffic on Route 1. That's the clog up there. And, and until you resolve that and have, and even with the light sometimes, people being what they are, but you are jamming up traffic, you're clogging that intersection, and it's a very dangerous I, situation. I, I have a suggestion. Yes. Um, basically, what, what was done at the recommendation of the traffic engineer, if I understand it correctly, Fred, and I don't understand this stuff very well, but we, we essentially changed it from the protected turn um, from a lead to a lag. That's correct. Okay? Right. Yep. And there was a consequence <coughs> to that. My suggestion would be that we ask the engineer, the traffic engineer, to come back mm -hmm. and take a look at that. In, take in, a ride with in, 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 with Mary Louise, with Fred Rice, whatever. Looked to me yeah. like his fee was a flat rate, two hundred and fifty dollars to come down and do it. It's an important yeah. intersection. I think it's two hundred and fifty dollars well spent. So. I'll give him a free ride in my car. So does that make sense? Anything. Item all set. Uh, the only thing I have to say about this, just to let you know how I feel, I go through that intersection probably as much as anybody does. I go up there frequently because I I do some business up yeah. north of there. I do the grocery shopping at two places, one place in Seabrook and one place in Hampton and one place in Northampton. I'm all over the place, back and forth through that intersection frequently. And if you pay attention to the lights and if you pay attention to your business, you do okay. Now the question is, I mean I do, I, whether regards how it works, but the problem is 
some people don't seem to understand what traffic lights are all about. Right, but we're, we're not going to solve so that. Can you have them do that? that that's a, I think we've decided that yeah. Fred's going to get the traffic engineer back in here right. at the earliest Look at the current situation as it stands. Right. Yeah. Okay. Take a recommendation back to the board. Final item on the agenda um, for new business, request for the naming of a street. Um, we had several names that requested this is a new street that is off of Jun Juniper, um, a new development. I, I have the an objection to this. If I, may I address that? Well, let me just give the background for the oh, benefit okay. of the public or whatever. There were um, three suggestions um, mm -hmm. from the, the applicant, J. Sand Incorporated, the first choice being Woods Drive, which is named after, I believe, a um, Civil War soldier and Mary Louise. Yeah, uh, this project just received a one-year extension from the planning board. Uh, instead of running around trying to name streets, uh, the planning board also concluded that the public works department's request for posting of a bond to make sure the project is completed be followed through on. Do we know? Have they posted the bond yet, Fred? They've posted nothing then I'm not inclined to touch anything regarding this request until they comply with what Public Works has asked. I have no problem with the street name as long as the developers comply with what Public Works told them to do on the bond. So you are you are suggesting that this be deferred I until it. such time. Any, anybody have any concern with that? Um, I have just one comment for future reference when this comes back for you to think about. When I first looked at this and it was Woods Drive, um, quite frankly, my initial reaction was Woods as far as forest, trees, yeah. and that type of thing as opposed <laughs> to somebody's name. Yeah. And one thing I asked Fred is what the individual's first name Michael. was, and he indicated that it was Michael. And just right. something to consider. We're not making a decision tonight. Make it Michael but Woods maybe Drive. Maybe we could make it Michael Woods Drive. There is exactly. at least. Well, let's get the bond. There the are at least first. a couple of, of roads in town Jane Appleton Way, yes. uh, Mary yeah. Batchelder yeah. Drive to consider. So just a thought. Sure. I, okay. I, and I don't believe, in addition, to that, uh, just for the, so the board knows, that the contract that's required for the inspection services by uh, CMA engineers uh -huh. still has not been signed with that role. I don't want to touch anything with that role. Any other board. new business? Show me the money. Let's put it that way. Consent agenda. Consent um, agenda. I have a question on that one. I'll be happy to move it, but I, I just wanted to, uh, actually, I probably should have asked uh, Ed Tinker. Um, on the, one of the properties listed here has been foreclosed on. And I understand that in the case of a property that's been foreclosed, as long as it's the bank or entity that has foreclosed on the property and paid the taxes, you can allow an abatement. But I don't know, and I haven't had a chance to check with Ed yet today, whether that's the case in this one uh, related to 55 Little River Road, because that is in the name of a... Of a um, Would you like to remove that one? Well, I'd like to remove it, that it's one. It's the in individual... My recollection, I did talk to Ed about a couple of these, but I believe you're referring to 55 Little yes. River Road. Okay. That's My understanding is it's the subsequent property owner who acquired it from the bank who has requested the abatement. But it's not what's showing on here. Okay. Let, let I, I me, would like let, to, let's, to okay, remove Okay, let, let's do this good. then. Um, first of all, before I even read the agenda, um, I would like to suggest, Fred, that in the future, that abatements be an agenda item as opposed on the consent agenda mm -hmm. and that okay. the assessor attend. Yep. And a matter of fact, I mentioned it, Ed, when I went over it, I said, I'm not going to ask you attend to attend tonight, but I think it's appropriate. We'll this, this is important business. Yeah. You should yeah. be here. And that way, if somebody has a question, voila. So okay. at any rate, um, I would, um, I'll read the consent agenda item. Um, one involves abatements on six properties. Mm -hmm. um, we will be removing um, one of those properties, which is 55 Little River Road, from the list for approval. Um, item two is Hawkers and Peddlers Vendors License Northeast Ice Cream. 
Number three, a dance hall permit for Wally's Pub, 144 Ashworth Ave. Number four, a dance hall permit for S&S Hotels, which, which is the Ashworth by the Sea, 295 Ocean Boulevard. Number five, a permit for the use of town property at Place Cove. Uh, worth noting that that's um, September 28th, long after the Sorry, summer season. <laughs> and the final item, a raffle permit yeah. for the Hamptons Art, Arts Network, uh, October 5th, Also move the consent agenda, Mr. Chairman. I'll and second. I will second that. Okay. No, you don't want a second from the chair. Um, second. All in favor? Okay. Any other closing comments? I have one. I will be submitting my resignation as a selectman tomorrow morning at, uh, as soon as the town hall opens. Okay. I have one other comment. We have a non-public meeting scheduled for Thursday at 3 o'clock. Right. Fred, if you could ask Christina to notice that. Non-public, 3 o'clock Thursday. Right. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Yes, I'll make the motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Unanimous. Non-public? Non-public.